Welcome to the first episode of the Underground Broadcast. And we're still live. You know how we do. Cheers. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome you all back, finally. Uh, let's hit it for Como Kyle and uh, who's here. What's your name, scumbag? Elmer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds. To wipe that stupid looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers, Goldberg! I saw the cunt earlier here today. Let me hit it for this Australia. You can feel it while smoking. You can feel it while drinking. You can feel it getting woke as fuck. So get your slot ready, cause the cunt is here. Cheers the cut! Happy Saturday for you. And oh fuck. One of the best motherfuckers coming straight from Houston, Texas, none other than Joe Cool the Greaser. Repite su nombre, por favor. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ok? <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha! Cheers, Joe, you son of a bitch. Cheers to y'all. Mm. Happy Friday. What do you guys think of the new luck and shit? This is it, man. I worked really hard on this. Uh, I think I stayed past 12. And it was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I mean, just started off from the ground up, everything. Uh, and I think... Doing this show weekly is probably going to take a... It's going to be a lot more work than, than it used to be. Uh, but fuck it. It looks good. And that's all that really matters. Um, yeah. This is it, bros. The new, new uh, channel. Minus one Mexican. Still same old bullshit. And like I said, we still going to be... Live. I appreciate you all. Uh, I've had a shitty day. Not only at work, but in life. Some shit happened with my family and issues and shit. Uh, my brain's been everywhere. And of course, job, everything goes wrong at work today, like always. Uh, the days that you're having shit in your life, everything goes bad at your job, of course. Uh, but 
It's Friday night. It's time to relax. It's time to chill with my homies. This is what we're going to do, what we do every Friday night. Cheers to y'all. Y'all make it worth it. Uh, coming up tonight, we're going to spoil Madam Web, and I'm going to show you the best parts of the movie so you don't have to go see this shitty movie. We're talking about Fantastic Four. We're talking about Halo. We're going to talk about fucking Deadpool and Wolverine, which everybody's already been talking about. There's also been some X-Men shit that's coming out. And, of course, there's no show without your weekly celebrity pop culture breakdown. So stay tuned because all this is coming up tonight. You know how we do when we do what it is that we do here, motherfuckers. Um, bear with me. This is the first time we're going to do a fucking uh, a show by myself. Uh, I don't have anybody next to me or any shit like that. All I got is you guys, and that's really all I need, the audience. So we'll go ahead and uh, fucking I'll be reading your comments as, as we're going and shit. I didn't think we were going to be doing comments this week, uh, but you all you all are badasses. You commented on bullshit teasers. I mean, all I did was like five second teasers and people were commenting on them, which is badass. Uh, so I'll read your comments and shit and then, you know, we'll get started with the show how we always do. Uh, but yeah, let's get this started, man. We'll start with the motherfucking comments. And first, I also want to thank. Uh, Jose Trevino, no, this isn't Jose Trevino, this is a Joku, Super Saiyan Joku sending me this on uh, Instagram, IG, that's a badass uh, uh, Goku, uh, you found that online or what, man, I have some drawings of some Dragon Ball drawings, I, uh, I, I'm gonna show you one day, Joku, I'll send it to you on IG, but I drew all of them, like all the family, all, all, all the Saiyans, um, and uh, Vegeta, you know, his son, I mean, his son and his daughter, and I drew the, Goku's lineage to all of them standing there. Uh, I don't know if I put Krillin. No, I didn't put Krillin. I just put them. No, I might have put Krillin. Because I think I, I don't even remember. I got to look for that drawing. But I even have Shenron in the background. It looks dope as fuck. Um, and Joku sends us this, and he says, uh, eating edibles all day, all day. This fucking guy must be fucking comatose by now. Ready to chill with one and only son of man and the hashtag. Live. Uh, clan at the underground broadcast. Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag smoke weed every day. Hashtag THC, hashtag Mary Jane, hashtag marijuana. Cheers. Hey, on the real, uh, this is a broadcast, not a podcast. So I'm sorry to say you ain't going to see this on fucking uh, Spotify. This is now a show. You got to see it with your eyes, motherfuckers. Uh, no more audio files and ass and shit. Uh, so that goes for you. Uh, sorry, Jose Trevino. You're gonna have to watch us during the week and shit. No more, no more. No podcast. No more listening to. You gotta see. You gotta see nowadays to believe. This is how it's gonna be from now on. Uh, but let's get started with the comments. Thank you, Joku, for sending me shit. If you all send me shit to my IGs or to my Twitters and all that shit, I will post your shit. Uh, I forgot. I haven't gotten like I said. I've been working on this for two weeks and I still forgot some shit. I have to get uh my, my new social medias and shit. If you're already subscribed to our old social medias, you, I mean, you don't even have to, you, you just change the name and the ads and everything just change, but you're already subscribed. Uh, but I'll put it next week for all you motherfuckers what it, what it is. I think it's at Underground Broadcast or some ass like that. I think Twitter didn't let me put it because it was too long. I had to just put Son of Man. I didn't want to put 666 because that's too evil. So I just put 665. Uh, but yeah, that's my Twitter handle. But I'll get to the handles uh, next week. Anyways, let's start with the motherfucking comments. Uh, we're gonna start with the one, the only, number one Canuck in this channel, Indie Phantom. Let me hit it for this asshole. I just realized Indie Phantom's here. Cheers, Indie. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for all you motherfuckers being here, uh, chilling on a Friday night. On uh, the teaser, the first teaser I put on Sunday, he puts, Oh, yeah, channel getting a makeover. Yeah, yeah, I got a new song and everything. I didn't know I was going to be able to pull a song. I, I went, I, you know what I did? I went through all my old folders 
and I was peeking around looking for old beats and because I used to produce other artists uh, I used to produce a couple guys who rapped and uh, and this other chick who sang uh, you guys if you listen to some of the music of Melly May uh, and so I was looking for beats I was like no but I don't I don't think I have it in me to do music anymore I mean I lost I lost the music in me a few years back I just it just left um, but I, 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 I was like I don't know if I could come up with a new beat and shit and uh, the last two beats were kind of recycled that I was just old shit I never finished and I just fucking uh, put them together like the first channel I did was I Heart Spoilers and that was a beat for a song I had done uh, on Love Not I love that beat and then on this one was a beat that I never recorded anything on uh, for the dudes and this one I, I couldn't find a beat that satisfied me but you know going through all my old folders and listening to all these assholes old songs and shit uh, I started reminiscing, man, remembering a lot of shit when we were young and in and, and our fucking early 20s and shit. And uh, we chased the dream, you know, we just a bunch of kids. I remember I used to stay at a fucking, oh man, it was a crack motel. I was paying per night. Uh, I was paying like 15 bucks a, a day or something like that, 15, 20 dollars a day. So I would just, as long as I worked every day and I paid the fine, I would get to stay another day. But it was pretty, pretty much a crack motel, a whore motel. And I was staying there. And these motherfuckers, after, after you know, being at the bar or whatever, they'd come over and it was just one room. It was a motel. It's a motel. It's just one fucking room, you know? And they come over and I have the mic there and everything. They start recording. That's when we started, man. When we were young and shit. Uh, that's when we were starting. Uh, but and you're listening to all that shit inspired me. And I actually pulled this fucking new beat, uh, this new uh, thing out of my ass. And I'm, I was pretty happy, man. I, I, don't know, I, just, I got some inspiration just uh, reminiscing uh, about old times and shit. Uh, so yeah, that's how I came up with the under, I don't even know what I was going to call the channel, to be honest with you. Uh, I didn't know what the fuck I was going to call it. Uh, but you know, I was doing the beat and shit and, and, and I started thinking and then all of a sudden it just came out, out of my mouth straight from the underground. And I was like, oh, that sounds so sick. Coming straight from the underground. I was like, all right, that's what it's going to be called. The underground broadcast, bitches. Uh, so cheers! That's how it all. Is. That's how it gets started. You know, everything's by by accident, but you know that's how the best things are made. Cheers, Indy Phantom! Thank you for being the first one to comment on that. What's up, Trevino? He comments also on the same day. He puts dark. Yeah, the beat came out super dark because uh, I think I, I I just come out of a dark place. You know, the fucking channel died and shit, uh, and I'm going through some stuff in in life and. I just really like it's just dark I was just in a dark place I still I think I still am you know I'm crawling out of the dark right now I've been crawling in the dark looking for the answers who's that who's that who must stick motherfuckers oh yeah anyways uh, cheers Joe Trevino thank you for that comment we love you uh, oh this fucking satanist Rocco fuck my life let me hit it for this asshole where is he? Here he is. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco. Rocco, uh, he puts, Holy shit. We're getting teases on Super Bowl Sunday. I can't wait. Hashtag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. We're on top of some of that today and shit. Uh, cheers, Rocco. Thank you for commenting. You guys are badasses. All of you guys that uh, I can't express how uh, good it felt because I didn't think I was going to read comments. I think at today's show, I was like, no, I mean, they're going to mean nothing. So I'm just going to go straight into it. Be a, maybe an hour and a half, two hour show. I was thinking in my head. Uh, but no, you guys commented. And like I said, man, most of the time I used to say, I used to say it even back then. Uh, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for you guys because sometimes... There wouldn't be news. I would tell, I would tell, he who should not be named. I used to tell he who should not be named. That's the way we're going to refer to that asshole from now on. I used to tell him, uh, hey, like, there, there's nothing to talk about. We got very few subjects and shit. And then it's like, fuck. And I'm like, but then you guys would comment, like, especially on like the last day on Thursday or Friday, a bunch of comments would pop out suddenly. I'm like, assholes. And I'd be like, shit, man, like, it's okay. Because re reading comments, you guys make it about an hour and shit. Just reading comments. And I appreciate you guys. You make you make the show and shit. And I think we, uh, I, I get I get real buzzed and shit. I started drinking a little bit before because I 
I'm, I'm a little nervous doing this by myself. I'm not gonna lie and shit. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Gomer, every time you put the Canadian flag on the fucking, on the feed over here, it says caca. That means, ah, I mean, that means shit. Just so you know. <laughs> I know, you, I know it's supposed to be a Canadian flag, but for whatever fucking reason, it don't come out on my screen. It just, just comes out C-A-C-A-C-A. -A -C -A -C -A. <laughs> uh, but anyways, cheers, Rocco. Cheers, Gomer, Indy, you motherfuckers down there in the chat. Another thing, since, uh, there ain't nobody here to fucking, uh, 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 Get a second opinion. I'll be reading y'all's comments if y'all comments. Remember, there is a 12 second delay on the live feed. I'm sorry that I don't have Google Fiber, but over here where I live in the hood, AT&T is scared to come and work here even during the day. People get shot and shit. Uh, so I don't think we're ever going to get Google Fiber over here in this neighborhood. So I got to deal with this ass that we got. It is what it is. 12 second delay on your comments. Either way, I'll still respond. Uh, and, you know, if it's relating to the topic we're talking about. Uh, but let's move on from Rocco. Cheers, Rocco. Mm. The trumpets will sound. This fucking racist, orange-haired motherfucker. Let me let me hit it for this asshole. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs. I want to build the wall. We need the wall. But we have some bad hombres here, and we're going to get them out. All right. Uh, let me uh, I have something special for you. I know he who should not be named was the one who used to do all the voices and shit. And, uh, and he did one hell of a good fucking Trump, uh, among others. I, I'll give him that and shit. Uh, but I know I'm not good at Trump. This is the best I could do. And it, it is not that good. <laughs> I sound like a fucking idiot. Uh, but I did something special. God bless this day and age this new age we live in technology and lies and ai so we actually have the real donald trump here to read this comment here we go guys uh this is what the trumpets will sound wrote down uh for for uh, a couple of days four days ago here we go what the fuck i just noticed these were dropping very eerie uh, yeah, yeah, this, I try to make it scary, especially the, the, the teasers. What I did is, uh, I, I took the beat and I got the, the scare, the sounds in the middle of the song and I put them by themselves. I mean, they're in the song, but I put them by themselves and they sound super creepy and shit. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you like that trumpets and shit, uh, that I got your voice on there. <laughs> Cheers! Trumpets will sound crazy motherfucker. All right. Oh, shit. Uh, I know who this is. Canceled for life. Yeah, I memorized it already because that other asshole hasn't commented in a while. The fucking uh, the QAnon guy. This is canceled for, 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 for life. I got a sample just of for life so I can use that and shit. Uh, but let me hit it for this guy because I'm pretty sure I have one for him. Here we go. What do you call a hundred black men buried in the ground up to their neck? What? Afro turf. So another. How do we know that Adam and Eve uh, weren't black? Oh. You ever try to take a rib away from a black man? Okay, what, 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 are, what are three <laughs> things that a black man can't get? A black guy, a fat lip, and a job. <laughs> I told you I'm gonna kick this boy. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. Someone just got canceled. I wonder what they did. You racist. That's a fucking funny, uh, funny shit part. Uh, I think it was a Bernie Mac movie that came from with Ashton Kutcher. He's dating his black daughter. That's hilarious. Uh, anyways, canceled for lies says, This better not be some Jonathan Davis nightmare before Christmas BS, son. Cheers. Hashtag. I mean, it is a little bit Jonathan Davis because that motherfucker's Mexican. I don't know if you all knew. Um, yeah, yeah, the, I think the mom's Mexican. Ugh, the other little brother, he was in another, he was in another band called Adima. That guy uses his Mexican name. Uh, but yeah, they're Mexican. That's why they dress like cholos. Oh, what was his name? Fo, Fo, Feli, Foley? You know, the, the guy with the bass? I don't even remember what his name was, but that guy was for sure Mexican. And then, uh, Head and Monkey would dress like cholos, uh, not because they were Mexican, but because they probably the same neighborhood and shit. All they saw were motherfuckers dressed like that and shit. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, chairs uh, cancel for life, motherfucker. And and it's always live. That's right. Doesn't matter how many times this channel changes and shit. It'll always be that. <laughs> nah, nah. This whole thing. This will be the last time it changes. You know, unless all of a sudden uh, Melody Mac joins our channel, then we're gonna have to change it. And uh, yeah, it'll be like a Christian channel all of a sudden. Get ready for that. Indeed. Anyways. Uh, on the finally the reveal of the song, I decided to just put the song on Thursday so give you a little get your little pussies wet and shit. What's coming? Uh, and he says, "Nice son, I can't wait." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're here, man. We're here. Uh, it might suck by myself, uh, but we're here. We're not quitting. We're keeping it going. We don't give a fuck. All right, because we're not quitters. All right. We commit to something, we do it. We put the effort in. Who gives a shit? And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because, like I said, this channel is just about chilling, hanging out on a Friday night, drinking, and smoking. And forgetting all of life's bullshit that you just went through the whole week. And you're going to have to go through it again because I work tomorrow. Just like everyone else. Fucking slaves. Anyways, cheers. What's the we love you. All right, let's see who else is next. Oh, the fucking trumpets will sound again. Uh, let me go ahead and I'm not going to hit it for you. But luckily, like I said, we live in a day and age where I can do this. So here is his comment, people. Get ready. The underground broadcast. Hmm, I like it. And the American people will like it. Cheers to the son of man. And his new era of broadcasting. I hope this remains a woke channel, son. The people demand it. Cheers, son, and cheers to the woke pack. Hashtag woke pack for life. Oh, that sounded too good, man. That's scary and shit. You know damn well this is always going to be a woke channel, motherfucker. For, 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 for life. Cheers, trumpets. We appreciate your shit. And uh, trumpets, I'm going to let you hear no in case you didn't know. But uh, Gomer, let you know, Mr. President, give him hell this fall. Cheers, Trump 2024. There you go. You got a supporter already voting for you. Cheers. Uh, all right. Uh, next, we got the one and only Doug Unfunny. Let me hit it for this guy. Woke as fuck. And uh, Doug Unfunny. He says on the uh, on, on the on the reveal for the song, that cartoon of you is creepy as fuck, son. Reminds me of Evil Eddie from back in the day. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Evil Eddie, man. I remember that. I think that was um. Sorry about that. I think that was um. I want to say Image? No. I don't think... It might have been Image Comics at one point. But I want to say... I think it was Chaos. I think it was called Chaos. Because I have... Uh, I have oh, some of the first Purgatory comic books. I don't know if you all know what Purgatory was. Purgatory was a sexy as fuck Egyptian vampire. Uh, she was like, you know, she was an Egyptian woman, sex. They drew her with big titties, nice ass. She looked like this chick I, I fucked once. Um, reminded me of, of, and I didn't know her back then, but now that I think about it, it I still had to go look at that comic book again. But she was kind of a lesbian because she would fucking always fuck with chicks and shit. In the comic book, she would fuck chicks. I was a little boy buying these and shit in, in middle school. Um, but she would turn into a vampire because she was an ancient vampire. So she's human and then turned into her vampire form. And her vampire form actually looked like a like the she devil, you know, the red she devil with the horns and the tail, but she had wings, uh, and that's what she looked like. Her name was Purgatory. Uh, it was badass. She would fight like Egyptian demons and and, and shit like that. Uh, but they, I, I, there wasn't that many issues. I think it got canceled because uh, she was just too damn sexy. And there was a lot. There's, a, I mean, I have like three comic books, and there's a lot of sex in it between lesbians. It's badass uh, for a comic book to be doing that. Uh, yeah, it's badass. Evil Eddie, I remember that. Um, yeah, this drawing, I drew it. Uh, I animated it there with the smoke and all that ass. 
Uh, and I put a Carnage shirt on it. I kind of wish I had a shirt that kind of like that. Uh, I, I Carnage is a badass character. I've always liked Carnage uh, more than Venom. Uh, but yeah. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate you saying that. I, I think it took me back. I was trying to figure out who Evil Eddie was. Uh, and I remembered. Um, he also reminds me of... Um, Evil Eddie always reminded me of the one from Iron Maiden. Uh, just because it's the grin. I think it's the grin, you know. And when I made the grin for this one, I was all like, it looks fucking creepy as fuck with, with me smiling like that. So that's why I did that and shit. All right. Uh, oh, shit. Colin Larson. He's back, y'all. This is one of the new motherfuckers. Uh, he put, I don't know, man. Seems like the type of place you better go to be prepared with your rape whistle. <laughs> Cheers. That's badass. Mm. Let me give you the DJ horn for that, Colin. <laughs> and for that, Colin, I'm going to actually fucking toast a new beer for you, man. Let me just dry it here because I just took it out of my ice chest. There. Cheers, Colin. Brand new cold as fuck beer out of the ice chest. Mmm. It's good when it's cold. Feels good going down your throat. Aw, oh, yeah. Uh, Colin, yeah, I wanted it to look scary and, 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 and creepy and shit. Because that's when I started doing the song. I was got to be creepy and scary. And I had different alleys and, and, and backgrounds for alleys and shit. You know, I was trying to find like maybe like there was going to be like a, a homeless in the background or something. But when I found this 8-bit bit, uh, thing, uh, I just fell in love with it. Uh, let me see if I can. I'll, I'll show it to you guys real quick. I fell in love with it. And I, I just wanted to use it and shit. Uh, hopefully we don't get copywritten for this ass. You know how you know how it is nowadays. But anyways. Uh, thank you, Colin. You keep this up. I'm going to have to make an intro for you. Uh, straight up. Uh, I apologize right away to fucking Andres Sanchez from the Philippines. I still don't have your intro, bro. I think I have an idea. Like I said, I downloaded a bunch of sounds and, and shit. But I haven't found like... Uh, I, don't know, it's, it's, I haven't I haven't gotten to that 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 you know there it is yet. So I'm still fucking around with it. Uh, and plus, I was doing all of this for for tonight, uh, so I, it did take a lot of time, and I didn't really have time to do your intro yet. Uh, but keep it up, calling you too. Uh, you keep it up, commenting, showing up, whatever the fuck. Uh, you, you might be a woke pack member soon. I mean, I made Andres Sanchez a woke pack member from the Philippines and shit. Let us know where you're from, uh, Larson. Uh, you know. Obviously, you're American. You look American. <laughs> or Australian or white. You could be Britain for all I know. <laughs> South African. Uh, but either way, man, we love you on this channel. Thank you for commenting. Cheers. All right, let's keep going. Oh, shit. This misogynist asshole's back. No, ma'am. Let me hit it for this guy. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. He says, uh, the underground bar broadcast. Let's go. Hashtag. Live. Cheers. No, ma'am. Thank you. Broadcast. Broadcast. All right. No, it's not a podcast anymore. I don't know if you read the intro. It doesn't say this is a, a podcast anymore. This is program. All right. Get it straight. <laughs> All right. Let's see who else is next. Uh, DJ New Kid. It's been a while since I've seen this guy too and shit. He says, "Uh, this looks dope, man. I'm good at digital art. Let me know if you want anything." I've seen DJ New Kid on the live a few times. DJ New Kid, keep 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 this up. I'm, I might make you a fucking uh a, a, a Wolfpack member. Uh, he's got a gorilla and shit on his shit. That's cool. You do digital art and shit. Um, I wanted this whole channel because I was so mad and so disappointed and heartbroken and, and et cetera, et cetera, that I, I just really wanted to 100% put my stamp on this. Because you know, when I did the other channel, even though uh, he who should, who should not be named didn't do any of the graphics, I still consulted with him and asked him and shit. And, uh, and he would pick stuff. Like, I would give him, hey, what do you think of this or this? This or that? And then he would say this one. And this and that. Or change this. Whatever. 
So I really wanted to make this my own and shit, and uh, and I went for it. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's why I didn't, you know, because uh, I know the cunt has done the shirts for us. I appreciate you, cunt, a million times. And then uh, I, I, Adaline, Adaline uh, from Instagram that I met, she did the the past logo that we used for one month, and we paid for. Uh, so yeah. You know, and that's cool that you do it and all, but I really wanted to, I really wanted to just 100% go all in on this. I said, fuck it, man. Like, I'm not doing anything else and shit, so I might as well. So, here it is. Oh, thank you, DJ New Kid. I will keep you in mind if anything else comes up and shit. Cheers to y'all. I'm so fucking stoned, the cunt says. Gomer, you don't have to apologize ever. Never forget that. Uh, I had a had a teacher once who told me something that no adult has ever said to me. I did something wrong, of course. You know, you kid, you're a kid, whatever. You fuck up and the teacher gets mad. And of course, instinct, human instinct, you say you're sorry. And he looked at me. He says, don't ever say you're sorry. Just don't do it again. He goes, that's how you really apologize. By not doing it again. You don't have to say you're sorry. I was like, I love this man. <laughs> the great Vernon. is what I called him. Vernon. Vernon. But I called him the great Vernon. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a white dude. Uh, very conservative. But he was smart as fuck. Uh... I think one of the, man, that guy, man, that guy would say the best things to me that no adult ever said. Not even my parents would ever say shit like this to me, man. That's why I think that guy always stayed in my head because of that. I remember one time he told me, he goes, I look at you. I look at the rest of your classmates. He goes, and sometimes you stay away from them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, because. You're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> I didn't tell him that, but I was like, yeah, they're a bunch of pussies. <laughs> and he says, but you know what I know is that, like, I give you something you do and you focus. Everyone's fucking around. You focus and you do it. Or whatever you do, like, you put 100% into it and while everyone else is fucking around. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, tell me something I don't know, asshole. Uh, but he told me, he told me, I know that it doesn't matter what you do. He goes, you're always going to put 100% into it. And it's like, and you're you're going to succeed in it. He goes, even if you don't get big or anything. And he goes, you'll be good at what you do. And he goes, because that's the type of person you are. Uh, and, and that, I was just like, man, like, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to be a dick to my parents and shit. But they never said anything like that to me. And I'm like, this guy notices that, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I was a little OCD. I used to tell myself. Because I am a little uh, OCD where it's like I start and, and I like uh, smoking weed because I just like focus and I get into a zone and then I'm just doing it before you know it like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours have gone by and shit. And that's all I've been doing. Um, But, you know, that's the zone, the zone. That's what I, I, I call it when you get in the zone and shit. I think I, I have that ability to just start putting my whole mind into it and get lost and ignore everything else. And I think that man, I think he saw it in me and he would tell me. Because I was really quick, man. And that was a, he was a theater arts teacher. And shit. The guy, they would give us scripts to, to memorize. Because, you know, you got to go up there in front of an audience and all that ass. Uh, like that. I would memorize it. And shit. And well, everyone else is still, we're practicing. Everybody's still holding their, their script. Pussies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everybody knew I smoked weed and fucked off. But anyways, I still I still really good at memorizing that shit. Uh, cheers, DJ New Kid. I went on a trail. The other thing is, uh, I had it. Obviously, I work all day, so I just started drinking about maybe an hour ago, and uh, and I just this has been probably my first uh, fucking weed cigarette. So uh, yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. You know what it is. Uh, Gomer Kyle on the uh, on, on the. Well, I guess there's no videos, just good out of comments and shit. Uh, he says, cheers. Woke pack. Oh, 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 to the woke pack and cheers 
to the underground broadcast is what he meant, folks. <laughs> and cheers to uh, I was thinking of putting like uh, it's because I haven't I haven't found it and shit, but I want to put a rainbow that just opens up and then like a little fairy or something that goes like like Tinkerbell and shit like from the Disney. Probably get copywritten for that ass, but I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I want to do, but this took a lot of fucking work. Y'all don't even know how long this took, man. Uh, I hope y'all like how it looks. I hope you don't think it's too much. There's too much clutter and shit. Uh, but yeah, I did my best. Uh, cheers, Gomer Kyle. Love you guys. You guys are the best. Oh, Eddie Molina Vilches. This motherfucker. I had missed this guy, but he puts up. Uh, Ugh. I'm ready, my brown skis. I can't wait to see. We're here, bro. Vilches, thank you for coming back. Or at least, you know, I know you've always been watching, but thank you for coming. You know, I thought you were dead, motherfucker. I've been trying to give you, I've been trying to give you gifts every Christmas for the past three years, you dick. Uh, you better show up this year around November so I can get your info and send you something. Son of a bitch. Cheers, Vilches. You're the shit. I might get you, a, eventually get you an intro. If you, if you actually respond. <laughs> Cheers. Super Saiyan Joku. He says, yes. New podcast. Same asshole. I'm there. Cheers. Hashtag. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Joku. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, all of you guys, for being here tonight and shit. Uh, hope I don't embarrass myself later on, but we'll see how that goes. Cheers. Oh, shit. Let me see if this is the last comment. I think it might be the last comment, but let me check. Yeah, yeah, it's the last comment. But it's none other than the yellowest crew member in the woke pack, Robert Iger. Let me hit it for this Asian son of a bitch. Konnichiwa. And Robo says, uh, Hey, son, are those two Indian men arguing at the beginning? I knew you weren't Mexican, you freaking Punjabi. Cheers. Hashtag. Fucking Robo, you fucking dick. Um, you know what? That's the one race I've never been mistaken for. Indian. I've been mistaken for Native American. I've been uh, mistaken for Cuban, Puerto Rican, Egyptian, Saudi Arabian, Iraqi. Um... And for some strange reason, one time, Greek? Do Greek people look like me? Ah, what the fuck? That was the weirdest... This man thought I was Greece, from Greece, or Greek. That was came out of nowhere. But I've never been confused for an Indian, uh, or Pakistan, or whatever. I don't know, Punjabi's covers a, a, a whole region. It's not just Indians. Uh, but you know what? It's because I think they're just darker, man. They're darker than me. I'm I'm just tan, you know. I think Indians are 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 slightly darker than than than, than what I am, but lighter than blacks for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I've never been uh, until right now. You're calling me a Punjabi, so bitch. I might be. I don't know. I, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a pirate when it comes to online shit. Uh, VPN, motherfucker, Windscribe VPN, you know what it is. Uh, <laughs> you're a, you're a Vietnam off. You're a Vermana flyer, son. What is a Vermana flyer? Uh, I don't know so much. I mean, I started reading a little bit of, uh, uh, what's his name? The blue guy. Lord, uh, I don't even remember his name. Did you see? I'm so fucking high. I don't know. I started reading it and I stopped because I'm fucking high and drunk nowadays. Uh, 
At least I got to read the Bible five times and the Quran twice. Uh, I was starting to read the Vedas. I was reading about, um, uh, fuck. I don't even, I don't, I want to say Shiva, but it is Shiva. Shiva was the blue one, the beautiful one. That's what I was reading about. I think it is Shiva. Um, yeah. Vermanas. Oh, yeah. The ancient uh, Indian UFOs, the, the tri, the, the ones that look like cities. They don't even look like UFOs. They look like flying cities. You know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that shit. Uh, now I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, cheers. Cheers, y'all. I appreciate you guys. Uh, but I don't think I look Indian. Come on, y'all. Uh, I'm not dark enough. Uh, my nose is too big, too. I think they have they have better looking noses than me. I am jealous of that. I'll tell you that. I like my skin tone. My skin tone's just right. It's not like it's like a it's like a brownish, like a sand color, you know. Like not like blind, like like a beach sand. Oh well, I ain't white. I'll tell you that, motherfuckers. <laughs> but anyways, uh, cheers to you all. I appreciate you all for fucking commenting. Like I said, uh, you guys pretty much make the show and shit. Um, uh, cheers to y'all. Thank you all for being here tonight. Let's get this show on the road, shall we? Cheers. Let me get, take another drink here. Uh, take a quick hit. Oh, there's nothing better in life. I swear to God. Happy Friday. All right. Let's get this show on the road. Uh, Yeah. Godspeed is what they say. Well, let's get started with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, Taylor Swift won her very first Super Bowl championship. <laughs> As she took the Kansas City Chiefs to win their third championship, christening them an official dynasty. This is just one more milestone to add to her estimated $1.1 billion brand. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. Press that button there. Taylor Swift, my folks, she's unstoppable. She's everywhere, all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But there is something that happened, Super Bowl fucking Sunday, that I think should have overshadowed this little girl being there. But it didn't for some strange reason. But I want to talk about it. Her boyfriend, Travis, or what is it, Kels, or Kit Kelis, how the fuck you pronounce it, in one of the most immature, most disrespectful displays I've ever seen, a player and a coach, this motherfucker pushes and gets into Andy Reid's face and starts yelling and shit like some kind of child. A man who has been your coach, not only that, but could pretty much be your fucking grandfather, old enough to be your grandfather, and shit. Here we are. This is an example of what the future holds for America, all right? Because not only is the younger generation like this asshole, because he's in his early 30s, I believe. He feels he's so entitled and so good and better that he can go chew out his superior that is old enough to be his grandfather in front of all his teammates and the world live television. Not only that, but Andy Reid accepts it like it's okay. What the fuck has happened to this country where this kind of behavior is being tolerated? Oh, it's okay because he was angry. It's part of his feelings. He needs to express himself. Fuck you. Show some respect. Son of a bitch. 
What the fuck is going on? If I was Andy Reid, that son of a bitch, he wouldn't have been benched. He would have been escorted the fuck out of the arena, along with his little girlfriend and all her friends. Get them the fuck out of here. And if we lose tonight, I want the whole fucking team to know it was his fault for disrespecting me, your coach. This is some ass. I, I don't understand why this is not what everyone is talking about. I don't understand why this is what everyone says is okay. Fuck this guy. How is he a hero? And at the end of the game, they let him talk and everything and cheers and, and to the fans. And he was, you got to fight for your right to party. Fuck you. What the fuck? I would have been like, take your ass to the hotel or in the plane. Get him out of the fucking stadium. I don't want to see his bitch ass. Then he's not going to get a Super Bowl ring. I'm keeping it. Dumb son of a bitch. He can take his ass to whatever Ohio, wherever the fuck he's from, one little farm. He can go fucking milk some cows if that's what he wants to do. Fucking disrespect me on live television. I'm the goddamn coach. Fuck this. This pissed me off. I don't know how you all feel about this. This is bullshit. Uh, but this is where America, to me, this is where it's headed. Because it's okay for children to throw little tantrums if they feel that they're entitled and they deserve something that they're not getting. Fuck you. Pacheco was on fire, motherfucker. And he, and Andy Reid saw it. I mean, the guy's on fire. He's he's lit. He's got a fire. He got, yeah, he made a mistake. He dropped the ball, whatever the fuck. Fuck you. You didn't even score the touchdown, you son of a bitch. All you did was draw the, the fucking ball into the end zone so that then they could be, you know, fucking uh, third and goal or whatever the fuck. So no, but you didn't do shit all day. All day. Uh, anyways, enough of that, about this. This is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not playing when I said I was really pissed off when I saw this live on TV. I saw the game. I love the Cat City Chiefs. Those who know me know I love the Cat City Chiefs since I was a little boy. For the wrong reasons. Uh, the school I went to, the colors were red and shit, and and, and the uniforms were white, and I fucking I like the Kansas City Chiefs because of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, was, since I was a little boy, you know, that was my team, even though they always lost. Now they're winners. I don't want winners if they're just entitled fucking pricks. That's all I'm gonna say. Fuck this guy. Anyways, let's move on to the important part of the goddamn show because I'm trying to fucking uh, explain here the the important part. And that is none other than Taylor Swift. And I apologize for that. Like I said, I've never done this show by myself. And this is all brand new. So I'm fucking up left and right. <laughs> Taylor Swift. His girlfriend stole the goddamn show. And is, and is what everyone has been talking about. All right. Uh, and here is Taylor Swift in her private suite with her Taylor gang, as I like to call them. We got Blake, Blake Lively there. Uh, by the way, Blake Lively is said to have been wearing half a million dollars worth of jewelry. That's right. All those bracelets and that thick-ass gold chain and those earrings and the fucking uh, uh, clit ring. You don't see. Got a diamond on it and shit. Uh, she also got her butt chicks pierced. You know, like the way bitches do her cheeks. But she got her ass chicks pierced. She got two diamonds on each side. Fucking Ryan Reynolds is lucky son of a bitch. Half a million dollars worth of jewelry on this bitch. Just casually. Let me go in there and show off and shit. Since I'm hanging out with Taylor Swift. Yeah. yeah. We got Taylor Swift's little unpopular, not famous friend with a big nose. She's kind of cute. Whatever. What the fuck? And of course, I Spy showed up. She's probably going to have a single with Taylor Swift or some ass. I don't listen to the songs. They might already have a single. I don't know. But I Spice was there with her half-brother or whatever, Rico Spice, uh, sporting matching perms. Uh, they both dyed her hair blonde and shit. Um, yeah. So they got a lot of celebrities and there's a lot of other people there, you know, they're chilling and they were all going crazy and being drunk and, and being rowdy and shit because they got to support this fucking Travis uh, Kales or whatever the fuck his name is. This, this immature fucking petty son of a bitch disrespecting old man. Uh, but anyways, the NFL obviously benefited a lot from Taylor Swift this whole season. From her being there, fucking this guy, fucking, I don't know, twice her size and shit, twice her height. We're the fucker and shit. She likes it, you know. 
It's fine. You know, that's what girls like. Then go get it. You know, like what I like, I like big asses. Go get it. But anyways, yes, they benefited a lot. The ratings have gone up. They said more women have watched the Super Bowl this past Sunday than they ever have in, their, in, 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 in any of the NFL's history. Viewership has gone up. They're making more money, y'all. More money. Millions of young Swifties were exposed to a brand new game. And like most women, the first time they're exposed to something that men do, they don't understand it. We got a little video here of Ice Spice. Been hanging out there with Taylor Swift and her Taylor gang. And she looks confused as fuck. Look at this poor little girl. And this little, little white girl trying to explain to her. And this little white girl, you know goddamn well she doesn't know what she's saying. She's all like, look, they got the ball. They kick the ball to them. And then they got to run and put it on the other side. And, and then those other guys are going to try to stop them. That's how you play. The little black girl is all like, okay, so like, why are they stopped? Oh, 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 because it's a timeout. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is what a lot of men... And uh, and and ex experienced this Sunday when their suddenly girlfriends were interested in football because Taylor Swift was gonna be there. What just happened? What is going on? What the fuck? Yeah, not only that, but you're gonna have a generation or a whole fucking demographic of women who didn't watch football now be like, holy shit! I can see that guy's crotch. Oh, yeah, look at him bending over in his ass. Oh, yeah, cheers. Hey, women are horny just like men, all right? They don't give a fuck what the hell is happening in the game. They just see men in tights bending over and shit, all right? That's all they fucking care about, just the way we go and fucking see women wrestle. We don't give a fuck who's going to win or if they're any good at wrestling. We just want to see their tits and ass. Cheers. I Spice is an MK Ultra honey put agent. They're all plants, record industry plants, especially when you know they're not good. You know, they're like that. You know, I I I can't talk for I Spice. I've never heard any of her rap songs or music. I've seen her piss on stage on people that ask for it. She's smart. She makes sure the fan wants to be pissed on before she pisses on them. That's why it's legal. Uh, but I never heard her music, but I mean, the majority of uh, music artists are plants. You know what I'm saying? I think the industry got extremely lucky with Taylor Swift. Because she is a plant, but she's a plant that is an actual musician. And actually writes her own music. But she's a plant where they say, this little girl is everything we need to seduce them. That's why she's a plant, but she's a talented one. I'll tell you, I'll give her that. Uh, cheers to these little girls who now like football and shit. Uh, and and uh, and you know, that's making the NFL more money, I guess. So, I mean, that's not a bad thing, I guess. Anyways, uh, let's get back to the K Taylor gang and her suite because she did have Lana Del Rey. She had Lana Del Rey there, and uh, yeah. This chick has always had a fine ass fucking body. I'm not gonna lie. I, I fucking love those big titties. Um, and she was there, even though she never really got popular as everyone else in the industry. Uh, but she did sleep with a lot of people that made her famous and got to record albums. So we gotta give it up to her. You know, any woman who's willing to sleep for fame, you know, she deserves some time in the spotlight, I guess. You know, it's like that movie we saw. What was it called? The Lonely Lady. Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. The lonely lady uh, in Hollywood. She slept her way to the top. And uh, and she admitted it at the end. But fuck it. She got her Oscar and shit. So cheers to that. And cheers to Lana Del Rey and her milky white skin. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. <sighs> we also had the Justin Bieber. And he was actually in the Kardashian suite, believe it or not. This motherfucker. Uh, the Justin Bieber was there, and he took his uh, wife, Haley Baldwin, the Baldwin little girl. And look at how fucking interested she is in this. She's not even looking at the goddamn game. No, neither is Bieber. Uh, he's uh, asking for approval. Y'all didn't know he's been dealing with paralysis of his face. 
It is said, just rumor, I cannot confirm this because I wasn't there when this happened, but they say that he did take some Novocaine so he could droop down the normal part of his face to fucking be even with the paralyzed side of his face. So now he looks normal. Uh, I like how he looks, you know, with like, you know, his shirt open with nothing underneath. You know, he kind of reminds me in the cap, backwards cap. He kind of reminds me of a fucking young uh, uh, fucking Kevin Federline. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 he does. Oh, uh, this little Baldwin girl. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess every little girl back in the day did grow up fucking fantasizing about marrying Justin Bieber. So, you know, I guess you can't blame her for being there. But once you're there and once you're there and the guy's fucking face starts drooping, what are you going to fucking do? I mean, you're going to look like an ass if you divorce him. So, yeah, that's her face right there. God damn it. I'm stuck with this bitch until he overdoses, oh, and, you know, and I can move on to something else. Or he cheats on me, <laughs> and then I can move on to something else. You know, either way, uh, yeah. We'll see what happens with these two. But they were actually in the Kardashian suite, and we're not going to show any of the Kardashian suite, because believe it or not, everybody was fucking boring in the Kardashian suite. In the suite. Er this is what everybody in the Kardashian suite were like. Everybody was fucking boring. Bored. Unlike over here in the Taylor suite, everybody's going crazy and shit. Everybody's drunk and fucked. Even that old lady in the background, I think that's Taylor Swift's mom. She was all fucked up and shit. Or no, that was Kyle's mom. And that's his brother too. His, his less talented, uh, almost look like him brother. He's probably, look, he's falling asleep there, son of a bitch. That's why you're not on the goddamn fucking football team. You're lazy and shit. Uh, but anyways, yeah, these guys were the Kardashian suite. The Kardashian suite was boring. They said there was people on the TV watching something else, not even the fucking game and shit. That's how boring everybody was. Nobody was drunk or partying. You know why? Because Kanye wasn't there, motherfuckers. He, he was the life of the party in that family until they kicked him out. But anyways, uh, last but not least, we got over there in their own private suite, none other than uh, the smartest man on earth, the, none other than the autistic Elon Musk. And he was there with his two half alien, half robot fucking kids with names I can't even pronounce because it's got all these symbols and shit. It's one of their nannies or some girl he's fucking, I don't know, some, some chick he paid to be there and here, take care of my daughter while, while I try to figure out how can I improve the NFL with my Neuralink. This motherfucker's thinking about putting chips into football players so that he, they can see fucking you know, like visions and like you can see the plays, like the coaches calling the play, and the motherfuckers already gonna see the arrows and shit. That's the, those, that's what they need in the NFL because these motherfuckers are not that smart. They're not that smart. They're dumb as fuck. So they need the, the, this this technology that Elon Musk is gonna provide one of these days for them. I'm telling you, this is the future right here. And this guy, he went to the Super Bowl and he's thinking about it. That's that's where this is going to. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, cute, cute fucking kids. Uh, too bad he fucking grew them in a test tube or some shit. Uh, cheers to Elon Musk. Uh, and cheers to the Taylor gang. Uh, they provide a lot of entertainment and shit. And, and you know, it gave a lot of people fucking something to talk about and shit. Uh, so, cheers. Mm. But, the one thing I think is the main topic that I couldn't believe when I found out. Was the commercials? Did y'all see the Super Bowl commercials? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot. No, some of them were good. I think. I'm not gonna lie. When I was younger, there were better commercials. Commercials that make you cry and shit. This is a commercial. The Budweiser commercials. They would fucking hit you in the heart and you cry. You want to be a? Hey, let me go get a beer. This is a fucking good commercial. You get drunk. More. You become a wino because of one of the commercials and shit. Coca-Cola used to make you cry with those polar bears and shit. Family. I don't know what the fuck kind of commercial we see all Ben Affleck dancing around and shit. Actually, I like that commercial. I'm not gonna lie. But my, my what I'm trying to get to is, is is yes, the quality has changed, the mentality has changed, but the price has changed, my friends. Because this year. People were being charged fucking seven million dollars for 30 seconds of airtime. 30 seconds. 
What the fuck? Seven million dollars for 30 seconds. Uh, wow. Look, let's 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 really think about what this what this means, y'all. Let's really think about what this means. Seven million dollars for 30 seconds. The Deadpool trailer which is what everybody's been talking about and we're going to talk about it later on tonight give you all the spoilers and all this hidden stuff and all that ass for you guys, all right? That trailer became the most watched trailer of all time in 24 hours. That's how excited everybody was about this. Yeah. yeah. It was about two minutes and 30 something seconds. I don't know. I'm going to round down. I was just going to say two minutes and 30 seconds. Two minutes and 30 seconds for the goddamn tra trailer. That's about $35 million that Disney, Marvel, Bob Iger paid to show the trailer on television. $35 million. That's literally one third of the goddamn first Deadpool movie's original budget. A third of what that movie cost they spent on just putting it on TV? What could you have done with $7 million? Nah, $35 million is what they paid for the goddamn trailer. With $7 million, I would live like a king until I died. With $1 million, you know, I'm gonna fucking say it. With $100,000, I would live like a king until I died. You wanna know why? Because I'm poor, all right? And a lot of money is a lot of money for someone like me. This is waste of fucking money. People could have been fed, clothed, homed, paid for sex, something other than to show a goddamn trailer on television for two minutes and 30 seconds. God damn it. This is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. When you start thinking about how much money is being made from these fucking assholes. Paramount is the company that currently owns CBS, y'all. They own it. They own a bunch of other companies, subsidiaries, or whatever the fuck they want to call it and shit. They own it. All right. This last year in 2023, Paramount generated get ready for this seven billion dollars billion billion if they were charging if they were charging fucking seven million dollars for 30 seconds for a commercial then they probably only needed about 28 commercials each being 30 seconds, which a lot of them were longer than 30 seconds, by the way. 28 commercials, each being 30 seconds, to clear a billion dollars. There were more than 28 commercials that night. Not only that, they were longer than 30 seconds. They made well over a billion dollars in one evening. That is crazy. A crazy fucking amount of money, y'all. Well, the rest of us are still struggling, buying our cheese, milk and eggs, toilet papers, towels. Paying your rent, your water bills, paying for gasoline so you can go to work and make money to spend it on all that ass. And then you go and you watch a commercial so that these assholes can get richer. So, what I'm trying to get to is if Paramount is making this much money. In just one evening. 
Then why the fuck does Halo Season 2 look so shitty in the VFX? Fuck you, Paramount. You're fucking up. That kind of money, you could have made this shit look better. We're going to talk about this later on tonight. I don't want to get into the nerd shit right now, but I am pissed off about how shitty this show looks. It looks shitty. Anyways. All right, all right, right. That's enough of that ass. Uh, let's get back to it, y'all. Sorry about that. Uh, I get a little passionate when it comes about a fucking ass and, uh, and, and shit. Uh, but yeah. Let's move on from the Taylor Swift and the Super Bowls because that's not all that happened this week with the fucking celebrities. Oh my God. But before I even keep going, I am going to hit it up. For our other resident Australian, Bradley Lewis. <laughs> Let me hit your intro, bro. <laughs> Average. Cheers, Brad Lewis. Thank you for joining us tonight on this brand new fucking channel. Uh, we appreciate you, bro. We love you here on the underground broad a broadcast. Sorry, I fucked up there, Gomer. <laughs> you know what? I need to make a sample of that. The underground broadcast. Some ass like that and shit for you all. <coughs> Cheers, Brad. Thank you for being here. Um, anyways, let's move on, you guys, because like I said, the Super Bowl wasn't the only thing that happened this week with celebrities. Because we had none other than Mark Ruffalo, the Earth's hero, got his own star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That's right, people. Somebody paid $20,000 for this so this asshole could have a fucking, a star on a fucking, on the ground and shit. Uh, but, you know, he got all his friends there and some people supporting him. Jennifer Gardner was there and shit and they're making no, full fucking dumb faces and ass. Um, but they did do something special for him. He didn't get a regular Hollywood star like everyone, folks. Not Mark Ruffalo. Not the Earth's defender and the fighter of the people. Of the people. This man got his own custom made Hollywood star just for him, y'all. Not only that, but they, they went a step further because they know what he likes and what he's like. And they went ahead and they fucking specially made this made with soybeans. And, and hummus. And then they hardened that shit in the sun. And then they painted it. All right. This is like natural paints and shit, you know. Uh, dead, dead, dead roses and shit like that. But here is the unveiling of Mark Ruffalo's Hollywood star. And it's a beautiful star, y'all. It represents everything. Everything that this man embodies. Uh, for, 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 for his being here, his fucking, you know, his, his fucking brain damaged fucking face that he got when he got a tumor, he had to get an operation and shit, and his face came out all fucked up. But now he's rich and famous, and he believes, he believes in a lot of things about being equal and shit, not hurting plants and whales, a bunch of ass, don't eat meat, drive electric cars, <laughs> support China and shit. <laughs> Anyways, cheers to Mark Ruffalo. You got a star. You deserve it. You have some good movies, you son of a bitch. And then you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to give it up for this son of a bitch. Because this guy has fucked. What? Not, 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 I don't, well, I don't know. But at least in the movie world, he's fucked a, a lot of fucking fine actresses. He's got a lot of sex scenes with a lot of fine actresses, this son of a, this deformed son of a bitch. I'll give him that, you know, so at least for the for, for the sex scenes, he deserves a fucking star for sure. Cheers, Mark Ruffalo and your communist ass. We love you. You fucking dumbass. Shut your fucking mouth and just be the Hulk. That's all we want you to do. Idiot. Cheers. Let's get 
In other news this week, a tragedy struck. And worse, it struck on Valentine's Day. This hasn't been made official. It might, might, might be a little official. But apparently, the internet and the scoopers and those close to them are stating that Marcus and Larsa Pippen have broken up. It is over, folks. The we don't give a fuck debauchery tour of shameless fucking provocative ass is done. Wow. And they did it in the most mature way to do it. Mind you, this is a 50-year-old woman with a lot of plastic surgery. Really good plastic surgery, by the way. Whoever the fuck her doctor is. Ah, oh, yeah. She has an artist right there. And that's a 30-year-old man right there. Michael Jordan's son, by the way. And that is Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. They broke up and uh, I guess made it official in the most mature way you can do nowadays by unfollowing each other on social media. Yup, yup, yup. And deleting all your pictures where you're fondling each other's asses and kissing each other, shoving your tongues down your throat and shit. You know what? I'm happy for this. I hope Scotty Pippen has some kind of uh, relief from this. This was bad. Like, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna say it like this, man. There's a lot of shit in life that you gotta like really think about. Like, what is respectful and what isn't? Especially when it comes to pussy. Look, I'm a man. Y'all are men. And uh, if you're attracted to vaginas, then you know what it's like. I'll put it like that. You know what it's like having a penis that needs to go inside a vagina. And when you see something, you lie, you're attracted to it and shit. All right. I understand. A little bit. Maybe because I've done it. I understand. When your friend, you know, when, when, when you date his ex or some shit like that. He doesn't hasn't talked to her for years or some shit. I understand maybe sometimes, depending on what era, all the stuff that's happening around. Come on, sometimes shit's going on. I don't know, you get tricked into stuff. I don't know, you're drunk. I don't know what's going on. I understand some some some, some stuff like that. I'm making excuses here. Uh but when you're fucking, uh, when you're da when you're fucking your dad's best friend's wife, ex-wife, even if they're divorced, that's fucked up. And I'll tell you why this is so fucked up. Because I'm 100% sure that at one point. In Marcus's life, that's Michael Jordan's son right there. I'm 100% sure that at one point in this son of a bitch's life, Scottie Pippen held him as a baby and probably had him on his lap as a toddler or as a kid, six, five years old, when he's hanging out with Michael Jordan. And then that kid that you've known your whole life and seen grown up starts fucking your ex-wife. It is the most fucked up shit. And the most fucked up shit about it is that everyone was okay with it. It was on TV. Celebrated. Everyone was okay with it. It's so fucked up. Like, it'd be different. Like I said, if it was between friends, an ex-girlfriend and shit like that. But this is like, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Scottie Pippen held that fucking Marcus in his arms when he was a little boy. And to know that this little boy that you held one time in your arms, your friend's little boy, his son, sticking it to your ex-wife. <laughs> that is one of the fucking worst things to fucking go through in life, man. I'm not going to even lie, bro. Um. I gotta lie, man. I fucked one of my cousin's fucking ex-girlfriends. My cousin's like 10 years older than me. And, uh, 
Uh, he was not happy when he found out. <laughs> uh, especially since he still was in love with her. Yeah, but I didn't know she used to fuck him. I didn't. I didn't know. I'll just tell you like that. I didn't know. I didn't. I really didn't. Uh, but this is fucked, man. I'm just saying, because they all knew each other. They all knew what the fuck. Marcus knows her since he was a little boy. Marcus has known her. He started fucking. He, since he was a little boy, he's like, oh, I'm going to lick that ass one of these days. <laughs> those, were, those were his thoughts since he was like fucking five, six, seven years old. Oh, how you doing, Lucy? Oh, baby. She would hug him. This bitch probably knew it. She was a little, little boy. She fucking him now. Probably. I don't know. This is crazy ass, crazy shit. I'll just tell it like that. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm happy that this is over. Uh, because they didn't have any shame, bro. And it was embarrassing for Scotty Pippen. And Scotty Pippen's, a, I mean, you know what? He's a legend. All right, he ain't no Michael Jordan, but he's still a legend. He's got fucking five championship rings, motherfucker. He's a legend, and then a legend doesn't deserve this kind of ass. I'll put it like that. And no one deserves this kind of ass. No one. No one, no one. Uh, anyways, enough with this debauchery. Uh, this week, which we're going to talk about later on tonight, but the Madam Web premiered on Valentine's Day. And the sexiest ladies in Hollywood, who also starred in the movie, um, revealed themselves at the premiere. Uh, <laughs> Dakota Johnson literally wore a thong <laughs> and nothing else. And, uh, and then, uh, 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 Sydney Sweeney, who's already shown her tits in the HBO show, go see it, y'all. She gets fucked. Um, sexy as fuck. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk, I'm gonna spoil the whole movie. And I'm gonna show you scenes from the movie tonight. The only good parts of the movie I'm gonna show you so you don't have to go spend money on it. Um, in a nutshell, because I don't want to, I'll get into it more later on tonight. It's a good shitty movie. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, look, fuck, man. Like, I will never have any issues with with this new trend where women want to be naked in the red carpet. I mean, this is better than deep fakes because this is real. Ah. <laughs> Uh, that's all I gotta say. Uh, this is real. Um, so yeah, you know she got a small little ass, but uh, fuck, I am, I am infatuated with Dakota Johnson, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey, and I didn't even know. I, I mean, I found out. I'll find out. I found out uh, recently, maybe like a few months ago, that she was Don Johnson's fucking uh, a daughter. You know, from fucking. Uh, we talked about it uh, on on the cast uh, months ago. Uh, was that show called with Chich Marin? Uh, I don't even fucking remember because I'm fucking high and shit. Uh, they wrote the Barracuda. Uh, Don Johnson's in it. Whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, that's his daughter with fucking Melanie Griffin. Uh, damn, they made a fucking beautiful child. That's all I'll say. He's a good looking man. And back then, Mel Melanie Griffin was a good looking woman before all the plastic surgery and shit. I think if she hadn't done what she did to herself, she'd still be good. Uh, but yeah, beautiful woman. Now I'm infatuated with her. Yes, Nash Bridges. Thank you, Gomer Kyle. You're the shit. <laughs> Love you guys. Nash Bridges. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but I'm infatuated with this with this lady. Uh, I really am. I, I'm a little little small little crush on her. But I do want to show you guys. Uh, you know, why 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 I'm a little infatuated with her. She did an interview recently. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's clueless about comic books. Obviously, most women are, and that's fine. You you want a woman who's clueless about comic books? That that just means she's fine as fuck. All right, I'll just tell it like that. Uh, the, the rare thing to find a hot nerd. Uh, but you know what? Nerds are thick, and I like thickness. Thickness. I'm not gonna lie. I love it. Uh, but yeah, she's clueless about comic books, and she said that she called Elizabeth Olsen, the Scarlet Witch. Uh, she called her uh, when she got the part and she asked her, what can I expect about joining the Marvel Universe? I'm going to be this character. 
And that that <laughs> Elizabeth Elizabeth Olsen told her like, "Bitch, you're not joining the Marvel universe. That's the shitty Sony universe. Uh, expect ass." <laughs> is basically what she told her. Uh, so yeah, she doesn't know shit. But she went on one of these interviews, you know, for the fucking whatever guys that are famous, more famous than our channel is. Uh, and they got a bunch, asked a bunch of questions. And I'm going to play you a quick video. And I, I love this woman. I'll show you why I, I'm fucking in love with her. Can you name the three Spider-Man uh, Tom Holland movies? Yeah. Spider-Man. Here's, here he comes. Here he comes. That's, That's yeah. number one. Yep. Spider-Man. And he's back. And the other one, the last one is... Yeah. Um, at uh, go the Goblet of Spider Man, <laughs> Harry Spider Man and the Goblet of Man. <laughs> oh my God! Like, dude, to be able to be quick on your fucking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she knew. She's like, I don't know shit. I've never seen any of the fucking Tom Holland movies, and to be able to fucking just. <sighs> Play cool, funny, and still be come out like looking badass. Uh, this woman is pure gold. It's a shitty movie. It has a really low audience and Rotten Tomato score, and it's not making any money. I'm gonna review it later on. That'll be the last thing tonight. Review it later on. Uh, but uh, in a nutshell, um, it is a very um. It's a good shitty movie. It's a shitty movie. I enjoyed it. But we'll get to that later on tonight. Back to it, folks. Uh, because we cannot end your weekly pop culture breakdown without talking about the Yeezy. And this week, Ye did it again. He exposed his wife one more, this time at a nightclub. There she is, and she wore like like this rubber fucking, like the chef's apron or some shit like that. It's like rubber and shit goes all the way under her pussy and her ass crack and bends over to her nipples. Uh, and there you go, some other bitch there, some Asian bitch with a bra, no bra on and a white shirt. Probably somebody else's wife there exposing. Um, You know what? God bless these men. You know, God bless them that, 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 that take the woman to the club dressed like this so the rest of us can see something good. You know, all week, we've been bored and shit at work. Seeing the same boring girls and shit, not wearing anything good or provocative. We get to go to a club and see something like this, the men to bring, bring your wives and shit. Don't wear a bra, bitch, with a white shirt. Here, wet the shirt. Here you go. Something for you to look at, motherfuckers. God bless these men. You know, there are a lot of haters out there, like always. And they're going to hate on Yeze and his lifestyle and what he does with his wife and shit. But Yeze responded this week to your haters. I'll play a quick video, let you know what he said, what it is, bitches. Yo, I just want to tell everybody I posted my wife three times on purpose. You understand what I'm saying? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. So what I'm saying is, I delivered the album. The people still in my comments talking about, why you post your wife? Because she make me happy. That's why y'all happy with the music, because I'm happy. You understand? So don't ever say nothing negative. If you don't like my page and don't like what I'm posting, go fuck yourself. Seriously. Leave me... Leave the king the fuck alone. I don't care, bro. I'm going to post my wife as much as I want. Go post your wife on your fucking Instagram. So there you go, people. Fuck you. You jealous sons of bitches. Go post your wife on Instagram. Seriously. I'm not playing what I'm saying. Just do it. Go right now. Right now. Go post some naked pictures of your wives on Instagram. Please, and send me the links. I'm not playing. Send me the links, motherfuckers. I'll like them and shit. Uh, God bless all of these courageous men out there with money. Post nudes of their wives 
on IG and on social media for all of us to enjoy who take them out to clubs wearing nothing but these skimpy outfits. Because without them, we wouldn't have the millions, and I mean millions, of cockhold videos for you to watch on Pornhub. God bless Yeezy, and God bless these men. Cheers! That deserves me opening another beer for this shit. Let me get one right now. This is badass, y'all. I'm having a good time. There you go. Beers for y'all. There you have it, motherfuckers. You know what? I'm going to say it like this. And, I, and, and, and you know what? He's happy, y'all. She, and he said it in the video. She makes him happy. All right? And I'm telling you, if you were married to that, and she would listen and do everything you say, like, bitch, we're going shopping. Get naked. Slap these fucking stars on your nipples and your pussy. You're, that's how way you're gonna go. And she says, okay. I mean, wouldn't you be happy? Would you be happy married to this right here? Just saying, I'm just saying. All you jealous motherfuckers of Yeezy and his lifestyle, I mean, when it comes down to it, man, it's just different than y'all. Right? Some people like to show their wives off. Some people like to take them to clubs and have a bunch of black guys fuck them. Record them, put on the internet for everyone to watch. That's their thing, all right? Some people like that, some people don't. And that's fine too, if you don't like that, all right? But bottom line is, the Yeezy is happy, y'all. My Yeezy, he's happy. He's happy that he's got someone who's just like him. And isn't that what life's all about? Being happy. Be happy. Do what makes you happy. It's like that song. If it makes you happy, it can't be that bad. All right. Remember that. Yay, Zay. We love you on this channel. Cheers. All right, we're done with the weekly pop culture breakdown and all your celebrity ads. Well, let's get into what everyone came here to see tonight. <sighs> the weekly comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. Comic book nerd shit. Ah, uh, yeah. Cool intro, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Anyways, we're going to start off this week with some news coming straight from HBO and shit. Because none other than HBO has announced that a show spinoff from Game of Thrones is in the works. J George R. R. Martin and two of the writers from the Game of Thrones from season, I don't know what fucking season they were in. They're going to write this show. And it's going to be about Aegon the Conqueror. Aegon the First. Who conquered the seven kingdoms in Westeros and united Westeros for the first time with the largest fucking dragon that's ever existed. Along with his two lovers slash sisters. So yeah, we are going to get a show, this sounds fucking awesome, about the first blonde, blue-eyed motherfucker, white-haired motherfucker, who committed incest and fell in love with his sisters, and they fell in love with him, and he fucked them left and right. I can't wait to see these scenes. I can't wait to see these scenes. I hope they cast fucking Sidney Sweeney as one of them. That's all I'm going to say. Henry Cavill as the main guy. Henry Cavill could be Aegon the Conqueror. Sidney Sweeney could be the younger one and the older one. I don't know. They could put Shetty Hot Blunt, bitch. I don't even give a fuck. Put a fucking Emily Blunt. I don't care. I want to see somebody naked getting fucked. Game of Thrones style and shit. This sounds badass, y'all. Aegon the fucking Conqueror. 
the first Targaryen who conquered and united the seven kingdoms. It was badass. Um, but at the same time, this pisses me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get into it. <sighs> Fuck you, George R. R. Martin. This lazy, dumb son of a bitch hasn't even fucking finished The Winds of Winter. The final book of the goddamn story. The book that was supposed to come out before the show ended. But somehow, the show started and he was on the last two books. The show started and then almost 10 years later, as the show was almost going to finish, this son of a bitch hasn't even finished writing the last book. And so the show was like, how does it end? And that's why the final season of Game of Thrones sucks ass. Because it's this lazy piece of shit got too rich and famous to finish his own fucking body of work that the goddamn show caught up to him and surpassed him. And it's already ended. And he still hasn't even finished the way the story is supposed to end. Fuck you. And you know what? The show left it in a cliffhanger where Jon Snow is exiled as a fucking crow and shit. And I don't know, in the fucking in the, in the wilderness over there in the fucking Iceland and shit. And Daenerys' corpse, my dragon queen. The dragon takes her away. And you're all like, why? And you're hoping to revive her. But we'll never know. Because this son of a bitch. And yes, I'm hitting my desk and the mic and everything because I'm so pissed. This son of a bitch hasn't even finished the last book. That the show already finished and fucked up. And somehow, he has time to help write a new show. A prequel. Fuck you, Martin. What the fuck is going on? Where are your priorities? And another thing, wasn't it announced like a year and a half ago that they were doing a Duncan Egg show from the Hedge Knight books? Where the fuck is that? Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, shit. Uh, what should I work on first? You fucking idiot. You haven't finished the book. You want to do Aegon the Conqueror? And you haven't even done nothing for the Hedge Knight. What the fuck is going on at HBO? I think HBO and Warner are fucking up because they're putting too much faith on a guy that not only is close to his death, especially with, the, with his lifestyle. If you look at him, look at his lifestyle. All right? That's not a healthy lifestyle. They're putting too much faith on this guy that could possibly die next week for him to finish all these fucking projects and give them inspiration to make it look good. And don't even get me started. We're supposed to get a Jon Snow show. Which is a continuation to Game of Thrones to show us what the fuck's going on with Jon Snow and shit. When? Kit Harrington is a nobody in Hollywood. And it's all this fucking fat ass's fault because he hasn't gone out of his off his ass and started writing some goddamn fucking shows. I am excited for an Aegon the Conqueror show. Especially because I know the lore and I've gotten really, really into Game of Thrones. Ever since, you know, I, I discovered it with House of Dragon. I didn't know I fuck I always said, fuck Game of Thrones and all you pussies who like that shit. But I saw House of Dragon and it dragged me in and I saw then I went back and saw Game of Thrones and it really took me in and then I learned lore and read shit online and it's just I'm I'm in full blast my dick is all the way in this I don't care if I get AIDS but at this point I feel like I am gonna get AIDS because this son of a bitch won't get off his ass and finish shit you all that's all I'm saying look I am happy with Aegon the Conqueror. I am happy with them fucking possibly coming up with a show 
about fucking Aegon the Conqueror. You know, I'm excited about that. But, when the fuck is he going to come out? He's supposed to be working on all these other projects. This could be good. But this could also never see the light of day. There's been no progress in the Duncan Egg. No progress in the Jon Snow show. Just because they announced they're going to do this doesn't mean shit. When the fucking guy who created this hasn't even finished the final book of the story. <sighs> I don't know. I'm very disappointed and excited at the same time. I don't like these feelings. I don't. But we're moving on to more ass. And we're going to get the big ass out of the way, y'all. And we're going to talk about Halo. I'm going to try to be quick and brief about this. No, sir. I don't like it. Oh, my God. Look, before I get into the review and give you all the spoilers and low down, let me just say a few things. These are not the same showrunners, writers, directors, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Showrunners is what it says on the article I read. All right. That's as far as I got into it. These are not the same guys, the creators as the first season. Now I'm going to tell you something. I liked the first season. 80%. The other 20% were these storylines with the little Asian girl and a bunch of other ass mystical shit and sex scenes that didn't even need to be in the movie, in the fucking show but it still had me invested in it where i was looking forward to the second season but they got new showrunners and apparently from this article online that i've read somewhere that i don't even remember because i'm drunk and high so i can't tell you the fucking link or the source but I read it. It's not coming from me. According to this guy, people, they, whatever they fucking identify as nowadays, they're saying that the showrunners, the new showrunners said, eh, we didn't like the first season. And we're going to change stuff to make it more palatable to us. All right. Let's get into it. I'll show you the action scenes in the background. Get into it. Um, uh, I was lost in the first episode. Now, mind you, the number one thing I'll say in this channel, I haven't said it today, but I'll say, I'm will i going to repeat this a lot as we go on. The one thing I say in this channel is never, never pay for ass. Especially when you can get it for free. Using a VPN like Winscribe VPN. Not a sponsor. Uh, but a very good product. I like it. Um, we never pay for ass. So, when I downloaded the first episode and I started watching it, I was lost. And I wondered, did I download? Because two came out the first week. And the third one came out yesterday. I wondered, did I down, did I, did I download the, the second one? Cause I don't know what's going on. And, uh, when I started seeing the second one, like I stopped it and I played the second one and I was more lost in the second one. And then I was like, well, this has to be the first one, I guess. Maybe, maybe there's an intro that I missed or something. I, I don't know. I, I fall, I fucking saw the first episode. I was fucking lost. And before I went to go see the second episode, I decided, let me go see one of these nerds online. Maybe they can explain it. Because I don't know what's going on. Like, why am I lost? Apparently. And I missed this. I don't know how. I must have been high or drunk. I don't know. You know me. I got ADD. But apparently, there is a six-month jump between the ending of the first season and the beginning of this 
fucking episode of the second season. And I was just like, what? What? Why? The way the last one ended was Master Chief gets completely taken over by Cortana. So he's no longer there and he's a robot now. And fucking McKee died and all these implications like Halsey fucking escaped by using the clone and she's on the run and all this ass like the halo ring they ended showing the halo ring and all this shit this starts six months later cortana is not even inside of master chief all the guys don't have the pellets anymore they don't they don't trust them all of this shit just dropped on you out of nowhere and this was all the decision of the showrunners, the new ones, the new guys who said, let me change. This is, do you know what this is? This is J.J. Abrams doing The Force Awakens and then Ryan Johnson coming in and fucking it up in the second one. This is exactly what is happening here. And this is bad. Because for someone who, number one, I didn't think the first season was perfect. I didn't at all. There was shit that I would have just completely cut out. But I was still invested in it. And I come into this. And I hate it. Because all of a sudden. You're not even focusing on the Halo ring. You're not focusing on the visions in the past. And the fucking lore of the ancient shit. All of a sudden. It's Master Chief. And Master Chief. They don't know if he's, if he's still the Master Chief. Or if he's corrupt. Or defective. And that's what the story is, is the government doesn't trust him and they think he's defective. And I'm just like, what the fuck? The story was about the, the Halo ring. Finding it. The mystery about the lore. It completely changed it. And it threw me off as the person who's watching. It, it threw me the fuck off. And I didn't like it. Um, The second... uh Oh... I'll keep going. These are all three episodes combined, you know, whatever the fuck. Uh, there we find out straight up Halsey is is not obviously she she escaped with a clone last season, but I don't know how because they never explain. But she's a prisoner, a prisoner, and being confined in a room, and the guy who's holding her prisoner is the new head of the Spartan program. Some fucking guy named Eckerson. And this guy's a piece of shit. Because even more than... Well, she's still a piece of shit. You could tell. You could tell. Look, I never liked her. And I love. that's why I love... This actress is amazing. Because I hated her in the first season the whole fucking time. I hated her. I wanted to fucking punch her. Bitch slap her. Fuck the shit out of her. Whatever. I hated her. Uh, <laughs> I hated her. But you know what? That's what makes a good actor. Especially a villain. When they really make you hate them. They're like, that's a fucking good actor. And she was good in it. And she's still the same, so she's still top quality. So this guy is even more of a piece of shit than she is. But he's, he's a good actor, too. I'm not gonna, I'm going to deny him of that. But who is he? Where does he come from? Whatever. Basically, he's more about the image and about the, the way he promotes, basically, the media. If there's trouble, he's going to put a commercial or some shit where, oh, there's no trouble. Everything's perfect. We won the battle and shit. That's what he does. If the Spartans uh, won the battle, he doesn't put the Spartans on TV. He puts regular soldiers and puts the humans so that the humans can feel proud because it's like you're relying. And I understand that psychology that he's talking about. You're relying on all oh, your heroes are artificially made. No, your heroes are humans just like you. Join the army. And that's what he's doing. So he's kind of evil. The whole point is he knows He's because he's running the, the Spartan operation. He knows that the covenant is on reach, which is part of the game. I get it. You're putting something cool in the game in the fucking series, and that's cool. But you drew you you left the last story talking about the Halo ring and, and, and the mysteriousness. It's fucked up that they did that. But this guy knows that the bad guys are on reach. And he knows uh but he's trying to cover it up because there's no way to stop it. You got to look good for the government. And he doesn't want to know, show people, the people that they knew. You know, it's like covering it up and shit that we're fucking up. Um, so, yeah, that's basically the three, three episodes. But there's more shit that pisses me off. Because 
Cortana looks nothing like the Cortana in the first season. And this was the showrunner's decision. This is not even a real person. This is digitally made. So why couldn't you just keep it the same? You're trying to tell me like this is not even the same show as the last show. Fuck you. It already makes me feel like it's not because you completely avoided the whole story and you went into something else. It's very jarring. There's some characters that are not even in this. Miranda Keys, the little black girl from the first season, is not even in this. And she was a big character. I mean, her mom is Halsey and her dad is the fucking commander. And she's not even in this. And you change the look of Cortana. And by the way, Ackerson, the bad guy, he has Cortana locked up in some digital shit. I don't know. Here's a computer that you can't get out of, but now you're here and I can hold you prisoner. It didn't make any sense. We took you out of Master Chief and in a scene that we didn't even show and now we put you in a little fucking glass shit and I talk to you and no one else can. Fuck you. I don't know what's going on. I'm fucking pissed. And then even worse, apparently McKee is still alive even though she got shot in the first fucking season. And I'll tell you one thing. I was like, kind of on and off about McKee. I really was. Uh, in the last season. Because sometimes it felt like her character did have a place. And then other times, especially when she started becoming a love interest for Master Chief. I was like, why? She already has a place as the human the Covenant took. She doesn't need to fall in love with Master Chief and have sex with him. Like, you're making up a new character that's fine. But why the fuck do you have to... I don't know. She's alive. And not only that, but she's controlling the fucking... Uh, uh, the Covenant. And she orders them around. And then they find an art artifact. And this was in the, like, the first episode, maybe? Or something? Second episode? They didn't even touch it on the third one. They didn't even touch it. It gets worse. Right? There's a story in there with Quan. You know, the little angry Asian girl and Soren. Soren gets captured. You know, I don't know. Look. I am not liking the season two. The, the, I said it earlier during the fucking celebrity shit. The visual effects have been downgraded. Fuck you, Paramount. You just made a billion dollars in one evening. And you downgraded the visual effects for the show. To me, they look downgraded. The first season looked so much cinematic. Like it could be in theaters. This looks fucking... Not everything. Not everything. Some of it looks like sci-fi channel shit. Oh my god. I'm disappointed, man. I'm gonna keep watching this because, I mean, we gotta review something and shit. I'm disappointing. I got a feeling the next episode will actually be good. Because the next episode, they left in the conclusion in the third one. But the Covenant finally attacks Reach. And it's about to go down. And only Master Chief knows they're attacking. But it's too late. Because uh, the other guy, Eckerson, they know. And they're just lying to the people. They know they're going to get destroyed. And they're just trying to escape. And then, you know, it happens, it happens. And they'll come up with an excuse later. That's what he's trying to say. Um, but yeah. I don't know. We still haven't seen a Halo ring. The first season was about the goddamn fucking Halo ring. And there ain't no Halo ring in the first three episodes. There's no lore about getting into it or searching for it. So this pisses me off, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not happy with it. Uh, I really am not. But we'll see where this takes us. And like I said, I'll review it next week and shit. Uh, anyways, I'm done with Halo. But well, let's move on to something else that happened this week because we did have a Godzilla vs. Kong trailer. A new one. On the Super Bowl, I think. I don't remember. No, it might have not been a Super Bowl. Who gives a shit? They showed a new trailer. Anyways, the trailer pretty much confirmed that the leaks are true. We are getting a new Titan named Chimu. And Chimu is basically an evolved form of Godzilla. Who used radiation from some kind of star, ate, ate a star or a meteorite that fell from you know into Earth's core. And he ate it and he trans mutated more, turned into this. And basically has ice powers. And he was the first Titan to cause the Ice Age, and he's been asleep underground. And 
the bad monkey, the red ape, is going to have the last piece of meteorite or whatever. And some kind of stick or, I don't know, he's going to hold it with a whip or a stick. I don't know, some kind of weapon. And with that, because this monster feeds on it, he's going to be able to control it. So the bad monkey controls this monster. And what the bad monkey wants to do is take over the world and freeze the earth. Well, that's why Godzilla and Kong need to team up to stop these assholes is what's going to happen. And this is finally the first sneak peek. Even though we have leaks right here, we have the actual pictures right here for y'all. But this is on the trailer, the sneak peek of this monster that is in this trailer, which confirms the leaks are all true that we've been saying. For all of you guys. Uh, I'm going to spark another J here. I, I I like these movies. I'm excited for them because I like... These movies are not good as far as like... They're not an Academy Award winning movies. With a badass human story element. It's going to make you cry. No, this is like monsters fighting, destroying shit. And I like that, man. And, and, and that's why I like these movies and shit. And this sounds cool already. Um, but we do have in the trailer, I have an image here of them fighting. I don't know what city this is. I don't know if this is an American city or this could be like China. This looks more American, maybe. Mm -hmm. It could be somewhere else in the world. They're fighting somewhere. But you see Kong on the bottom left fighting the red monkey. Kong's getting his ass whooped. He's in the middle. I don't know. You bear, You kind of see a shadow, but he's getting his ass whooped. And then you see Godzilla in pink fighting the Shimu, which is bigger. Look, I've gone back and I've seen this trailer uh, in slow motion. Maybe, maybe it's because some of these scenes are too too fast. They, they don't, they, they're like, eh, whatever. They're cutting corners. Uh, but I saw it in slow motion, and some of the VFX don't... Maybe they're not finished. Or maybe they're just not going to be that good or rendered. This doesn't look good. And this is from the trailer. I froze it. I, I paused it really fast, and I froze it. Um, this doesn't look good as far as VFX. But like I said, these are like probably like two-second shots that maybe they think we don't need to fucking show how good it looks. We just need a quick image so their eyes can see some movements and shit. Uh, but yeah, here's Shimu fighting Godzilla on the upper right and uh, Kong fighting Scar King on the lower left in some city. And that's what's happening here. But the trailer confirmed another shit that all the leaks confirmed. And that is that Mothra is going to come out. The little girl in her eye for a split second in the trailer. And you can clearly see it in her iris. Sees Mothra. The leaks say that Mothra will be um, evolved from her last form. She will be more like a phoenix in a fire. With fire powers. Uh, and that's uh, what she's going to be, supposedly. So she's in it. And she's what's going to help Kong and uh, Godzilla stop this Shimu monster. Mothra confirmed the leaks are all true. All of them. Kong is going to get his arm frost bitten or, or damaged from that very attack you're seeing on the trailer. And that's why... That new blonde guy who is not Skarsgård. Where the fuck this new blonde fucking guy who's trying to be the new Hollywood and shit. That guy is the veterinarian of the movie. And he's going to design the glove that they put on Kong. Because it gets burnt or frostbitten when he first meets this Shimu fucking uh, uh, monster. And Godzilla's going to get his ass kicked too. They haven't shown Godzilla getting his ass kicked. But he's going to get his ass kicked in the movie. And that's why he has to evolve into the pink, pink form. So that they could fight this fucking thing. Uh, and there they are, all four of them fighting again. But yeah, leaks, like we've said, Mothra 
confirmed for the movie. I'm excited for this. This is this is one thing that I can't wait to see. I might actually go pay to see this movie because I'm a huge kaiju monster fan. And these movies, as from the MonsterVerse, since they've started in 2014, slowly they've gotten better because they're they're showcasing more monsters than than humans than the human elements in the movies. The show focused on the human elements, but the show was really good because the story was good. And I like how the show is explaining stuff from the movie about the portals and shit. Go watch the Monarch show on, uh, I don't even remember what the fuck it came out on because I'm high. Paramount, I think it came out. Uh, go watch that. It's really good. And it ties into all these movies and it gives explanations as to these portals and shit. Uh, I'm excited. I can't wait till this comes out. Uh, but we're done with Godzilla and shit. Cheers, y'all. And uh, we're going to move on to some DC ass. And it's none other than Joker 2. Fully box. And uh, the director, Todd Phillips, shared two images on Valentino's Day. And he wanted all to see how beautiful this looks, cinematography wise. And he also came out and addressed some issues that people have had concerns. People are afraid they're going to be a musical. The whole movie. Singing and dancing and shit. I said, well, there is a lot of music. There is music in it. And there is some singing and shit. But it's not a musical. It's still a movie. There's dialogue and scenes and shit. But I'm guessing every once in a while, these two nutcases are going to fucking start fantasizing and going into this little shit where they're singing and dancing. Which would make more sense. And if you cast Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn, why would you not take advantage of the fact that she's amazing at singing? A waste of money if you don't take advantage of that ass. Well, they're taking advantage of her ass. I would too. I mean, who wouldn't? Got a big nose, but I'm sure she fucks good. Don't worry. Chicks with big nose do. I would know. Cheers. Mm. My theories for this movie. I think this whole movie will be a delusion and a figment of Harley Quinn's imagination. I think Harley Quinn falls in She is a patient at Arkham. And she does fall in love with Arthur Fleck, the Joker, when she sees him passing by or whatever the fall. Maybe she saw him on TV or whatever. She falls in love. Or maybe she's not a patient. Maybe she's just a regular person, but she's crazy. And she falls in love with the shit she sees on TV. But I think that the whole movie and everything we see from the beginning to the end will all be in her head because she's in love with this guy. And she's crazy. It's in love with and at the end of the movie, you're going to find out everything that happened. He was never there. He's been locked up in the asylum. And it's her being crazy by herself, fucking everything up. And then when she finally gets arrested and thrown in jail, you'll find out that it's all in her head. And then she gets thrown in the asylum. And then she finally actually meets him for the first time. And that's how the movie ends. That's my theory. And that's what I would have done with this movie if I was the director. Uh, but I don't know, man. I'm excited because I, I look, I, Joaquin, I, really, I respect him as an actor. I don't, I did not like him in Napoleon. He let me down. I thought he was going to be really good. I didn't like him in Napoleon, but he's really good as this character he's made. This Arthur Fleck Joker. He's good at it. And Lady Gaga is good. I don't care if you hate her. She is good. Uh, I saw her in that, uh, what's it called, uh, Star is Born. And I saw her in, uh, in, in uh, Gucci, Life, Life of Gucci. Uh, she's good, bro. I'm telling you. She's very talented. Not only has she got a good voice, but she's very talented at acting. And I can't wait to see this. As long as it's not a musical. Where the whole time they're going to be singing. I don't mind a musical number here and there but I do not want to see them fucking 
having conversations while talking like this. All right, I went a little bit too much. Sorry about that. I'm not as good as she is. All right. Pop, 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 poker face, poker face. We're done with the goddamn uh, fucking DC ass because James Gunn hasn't gotten off his ass and done anything new for anybody. Uh, but let's get on with the ass, the real ass of the show. And it's none other than Marvel. And this week, just a day ago, I think, they released the X-Men 97 trailer. Ah, uh, I can't show the trailer because this channel will get blocked right away, live. The last time we showed a trailer was the, the shitty Shazam movie. We were doing a live stream and we got shut down like ASAP. So we, I try not to show trailers uh, with exceptions of other stuff like uh, I'm going to show you tonight. You'll see. I'll show you clips and shit. i show you clips. Um, Madam Web, I'm going to show you some, some of the movie. So don't worry. You got that. I got you. Um, this picture describes it all. This fucking picture describes it all. Oh, I don't even know what to say. Wolverine's claws don't even look like they're metal. They don't look shiny. Jean Grey is pregnant, but she's not even like good looking pregnant. She looks oblong. Oh, why? Does fucking Bishop have some kind of fuzzball haircut that I used to, that my mom used to give me back in elementary school? Rogue looks retarded. Storm, the, the, right there, it makes her look really weird. I'm gonna lie. I've seen the the, the, the designs. She's got a, a, a mohawk, and I like her with a mohawk better than I do with her regular hair. But it, she looks fucking weird. Like twin, her face looks twisted or something. And why the fuck does Morph now have a no face? Instead of having a white American face like he used to in the day. Not to mention, not to mention that Jubilee now looks really fucking Asian. Instead of looking like half. I know. I'm coming off a little fucking racist and shit. Fuck you. I like the way things looked before. You know what? There's a saying they say. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. What the fuck is this? Oh, it gets worse, people. It seriously gets worse. The animation is horrible. There are people online that are saying, oh, it's just like fucking, uh, what if? No, it's not. This is a clip from the trailer. I can't show you the whole trailer. There's talking in this. <sighs> this looks really bad. This looks like, okay, the, the old show. Look, you know what? Uh, before I even begin trashing it. This might just be a generational gap. Let's just be honest. This just might be a generational gap. But I grew up watching this fucking show. Okay? Me and my friends were in the third grade. Okay? And we would get out of school at 3.30. This show would start at exactly 3.30. The school was two and a half blocks from fucking my house to, to, you know, from my house, the school. So when I got out, I we had to put on my backpack, put all the books in the backpack. And then I would start running. And all my friends did this. There was like four of us. And we would start running across the street, two and a half blocks to wherever we lived. And we had to, one of the streets was like a fast street. There was no stop signs. And all the cars would pass by like that. So we would have to wait. But we would rush. And I promise you, we I would always miss 10 minutes of it. And sometimes when it was a continuation where it was like, previously on X-Men, I was happy because I would miss five seconds. 
but but five minutes of it. But I would always miss 10, 10, 15 minutes of it. Sometimes the teacher, I would misbehave or talk a lot, and the teacher would get me after class, and I would miss 15 minutes of this fucking show. But I was eager, and my friends were eager to get home and watch this. And I can tell you, back in the day, the animation was real. And what I mean by real is what animation really means. It's when you draw a drawing on a page, and then you flip over the page, and the next drawing, you're going back and forth, and you're moving it just a half an inch. And the next page, another half an inch. And then the next page, he finally blinks. And then the next page, he starts barely opening his mouth so he can speak. That's real animation, and that's real work. Those are motherfuckers that put in the time and the work to give you something good. Masters of the Universe, shit like that back in the 80s. A lot of people don't appreciate how hard those people fucking worked. That technology didn't exist. Those were cavemen fucking shit that they were doing. And it looked good. Gomer says Saturday mornings Batman was fucking great. Yes, it was. And I have to stop the whole fucking show because all of a sudden Andrew Sanchez shows up. <laughs> Andrew Sanchez, I fucking apologized earlier that I don't have an intro for you because I want to make it perfect and I worked hard on this channel. But I'm getting you an intro for you soon, hopefully next week. But I'm going to give you because you are an official member. Cheers, Andrew Sanchez. That's how we are with the Wolfpack members and the people on this channel. We fucking love you. We appreciate you here. Cheers. Mm. This, this is Venture Brothers. This is, there's Storm in the background and she's not even moving, by the way. And then there is the background that is what behind Storm, and that's one frame. And then they put Storm on top of that. They put Storm on top of her. And then they put Cyclops' chair on top of that. On the computer. And then they put Cyclops animated. And it's not even animated. It's like, it's two things. It's him staying still and going like this. And then the only thing that moves is his mouth. And then... There's another screen on top, and it's the computer in front of him. Look, the animation I showed you all when the channel ended, that's basically what this is. I don't have technology. I'm poor as fuck, and I'm one guy. Are you telling me that's as good as Disney Marvel with their billions of dollars can do what I'm doing? This is bad. Here's Wolverine, the same shit, the same style in the trailer. I mean, look at it. I saw the comments, man, and they pissed me off. And I wonder, what are these? Are these Disney bots? Are this Roberto Iberg on his iPod, on his on his fucking iPad or on his laptop, signing into different accounts, putting comments? The animation looks good. The fluidity is better than the 90s version. This is a huge improvement. Those are the comments. Am I crazy? Did you guys grow up watching the original like I did? This looks like trash. And I'm not even putting the vocals. It was the one thing. The one thing that I complained about the most. To, to he who should not be named on our old show, I said when we saw the video of the actor who does the voice for Wolverine, I said, hey, he sounds too old. And I don't know if he was trying to be Wolverine or he was doing his regular voice. But if that's the Wolverine voice, it's going to suck. Because this is a continuation to 97. Everything should be exactly the same. He sounds like ass. In just this little clip, he doesn't sound the same. He sounds old. 
he sounds 70, 80 years old, which he actually is. And I am not bitching or putting him down because of that. And I am happy he got a job and got paid. Everyone should make some money in Joe Biden's economy. But I am mad at the decision that Marvel Disney said, let me get other voice actors to replace everyone else who doesn't sound like them anymore. Or who had done d- d- a bunch of drugs and fucking died already. Let me get other voice actors and replace everyone. But let me keep Logan and Rogue because they're still alive. And they don't sound the same. <sighs> the worst part about this trailer, y'all. The worst part about it. Here it is. This is a representation of everything the show is going to be. Gambit jumps on Wolverine's back. It doesn't even look real or badass. It looks fucking... I don't even know what's going on. It didn't look like Dragon Ball Super. Don't mind. I know I Super Saiyan Joku. You can get mad if you want. I don't give a fuck. My biggest complaint about Dragon Ball Super is how they started cutting corners with the animation and how shitty... And this is the way Dragon Ball Super looks, by the way. That's my biggest problem with Dragon Ball Super. And it's my biggest problem with this. He didn't even look like he's really on his back. It doesn't. There's no depth to it. And shit. This is horrible. But besides that, this would never... Oh, uh, This would never go down. And it doesn't make any sense. You want to know why? Because number one... Gambit jumps on top of Wolverine's back to ride him. If this is the continuation of X-Men 97, like Marvel Disney claims it is, that would never fly. They hated each other. They hated each other. Wolverine never liked Gambit. And Gambit never liked Wolverine. And a few times they even tried to kill each other. Literally. It happened in the goddamn show. They would never be cool enough with each other. They worked on the same team, but they were never cool enough for each other to say, hey, jump on my back while I'm running. And not only that, but Wolverine's like five foot four and shit. Gambit's like six feet tall. You're telling me a six foot five motherfucker's riding a fucking five foot motherfucker? Fuck you, Marvel Disney. This is ass. And the worst part about this, the worst part about this is that Gambit touches Wolverine's claws and ignites them. Are you telling me that Wolverine's hands are about to blow the fuck up? This makes no fucking sense. This show is not targeted to smart human beings who grew up watching this show. This is targeted to nowadays generation who is a fucking mindless fucking idiots who somehow get tricked into thinking shit like this is cool. And, oh, the graphics are badass. No, they're not. This is lazy-ass fucking work compared to what was predecessor. Fuck you. This is so fucking bad. Wolverine's hands are about to explode. Whatever. He's going to be there with bones sticking blood. I think Marvel Disney going to show that bones and blood sticking out of his heads because they just blew up. Oh my god. This is so bad. The whole trailer was sad and pathetic. And they try to make it all like, I don't have it here. But they try to make it all like, oh, uh, fucking, um, uh, 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 Magneto is gonna blackmail them. And, cause this is the, this is, this is the last scene right here. They're all lined up and they're all ready to fight Magneto. Jean Grey got pregnant by Wolverine or Beast or I don't know. They all gang banged her and shit. Uh, and they're all ready to fight Magneto who all of a sudden is right there in the fucking X mansion. And he has a book and the book, he throws it at them. And the book says, Charles Xavier's last will and testament. And he says, read it. It says that everything. That Charles Xavier owned and created, including the X-Men, now belong to me. Yeah. And so, that was said in the very last episode of the final season. 
Literally, Xavier told him, I'm leaving Magneto in charge. He's your new fucking mentor. Goodbye. And now it's like a mystery, like they didn't know and shit. This is not made for people who watch the original fucking show. Fuck you, Kevin Feige. Fuck you, Marvel. And fuck this ass. And it's going to suck ass. And I'm going to hate it. And I am going to review every fucking episode. But God bless Winscribe VPN. Because I will never, never pay for ass. Cheers. Oh, all right, y'all. I'm sorry. I got really heated with that. Cause I, I, I'm telling you, I loved that show growing up as a kid. That's all. I mean, I didn't care about school. I just wanted to fucking get home and watch that show. I did. As a kid, when it was on the Phoenix Saga, I didn't want to miss the Phoenix Saga for nothing. And I would always miss 10 minutes. Five minutes, because the, the first five minutes are all like previously on X-Men. And I was happy about that. Um, but I would run with all my backpack full of books, two and a half blocks as a little boy and shit, just trying to get home to watch it, bro. I wanted it so bad. My friends would do it too, man. I know my friends know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's move more move on to some more Marvel ass. Because some of the rumors are now saying that Kevin Feige has decided, supposedly, to not make, go, go, not introduce Ghost Rider as a cameo in a show and shit, but to rather make a full-blown movie about Ghost Rider in the MCU. Rumors, not confirmed, or nothing. No big ass, no big titties. These are rumors on the internet. So, yeah, that sounds cool. I mean, Ghost Rider does deserve his own fucking movie instead of being some piss of shit Disney ass fucking low production show. You know, it does deserve his own, his own quality movie. But something tells me we're not going to see uh, Johnny. Uh, was it Johnny? No, that's Johnny Storm. I don't even remember what this motherfucker's name was. Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze. I think that what was his name. We're not going to see Johnny Blaze on a fucking show. Nicolas Cage. I think Kevin Feige is going to Start with the new iteration. Uh, I don't even remember what this guy's name is. Garcia something. Uh, I don't remember what this guy's name is. I know it's Garcia. Uh, last name. Um, but yeah, it's a Mexican. Mexican guy. And he doesn't ride. That's my theory. He doesn't ride a fucking motorcycle. Uh, he rides a hot rod. And shit. He works in an auto shop. He gets killed and shit and comes back as a ghost rider and his car sets on fire and he rides his car like a fucking badass. Um, that's my guess. Because everything's been new and young and different in the MCU. So why, if we were already seeing Ghost Rider in a motorcycle, why do that again with the same Johnny Blaze and the storyline? I think he's going to change it to be this uh, fucking new... Um, this new Ghost Rider, this Mexican Ghost Rider, y'all. Uh, that's just what I think. Um, yeah, it's not a bad story. It's not. I don't remember the guy's name. I have a few comic books. When it first came out, I bought them. You know, yeah, I mean, it was going to be a Mexican Ghost Rider. So, fuck yeah, I went out and bought them. I, bought, I have them there. I have a few of them framed and shit. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm. Uh, it's a rumor. It's a rumor. Nobody knows if this is true or not. But I'm 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 down for it. Why not? Um, can't say it's woke because it was already made in the comics before the woke movement officially started. This was probably pre woke, but they were they were getting the ideas in their head. Hey, we should include other races and shit. They put a Mexican Ghost Rider, y'all. That's what happened. That's what happened uh, maybe like ten years ago. It was it was all right. It was all right. Ghost Rider possibly coming as a movie. Supposedly, we'll see. See how that ass happened. Something that did happen finally, Valentine's Day, Kevin Feige came out and announced Fantastic Four, the cast official. No more rumors, no more ass, no more fake CGI, fucking AI art renders and shit. This is official art. 
And it is none other than the Mandalorian himself, Pedro Pascal. Just like the big ass had said, as Reed Richards. It is none other than Vanessa Kirby, which I just saw in fucking Napoleon. As a, uh, whatever the fuck that chick's name, Maria Tunit. No, it wasn't Maria Tunit. I don't remember what her fucking name is. Vanessa or whatever. Whatever the fuck that chick's name was. The one that Napoleon was fucking. She's going to be a blonde in this one. She's Mrs. Fantastic Sue Storm. And uh, Joseph Quinn. Who uh, is actually hot as fuck. Unlike the way they portrayed him. And uh, in Stranger Things. Being all full of pimples and shit. And crazy hair. Uh, he's going to be a human torch. Because everybody thinks he's hot. And none other than Ebon... Which I can't ever say his last name and shit, but he's the guy that comes out in the bear. Kind of memoir winner with a fuck. He's gonna be the thing. And I don't know if you all know this. But at the bottom of the left of the screen, we have your fucking Chewbacca Grogu fucking toy that they're gonna sell to every fucking kid in America. The robot. A little piece of shit. I think it's called Herbie from the comic books. A little piece of shit, Herbie. How can I help you? Oh, ha, ha. He's gonna say jokes and ass. Oh, ha, ha. You need some fucking tea and shit. That's that's what's gonna be there for the kids. Sell some merchandise and some toys for Christmas, everybody. Some fucking dumbass robot and shit from the 60s. And just like the rumors say, it does seem to be some sort of 60s era. Even the logo is now 60s-like. Um, two potential rumors are coming out. The first one that I will say to me is the least likely and I think is probably the original plan before it got changed. That's my theory. But this is the rumors that are out there. These are like the leaks that are out there. The first one states that they were astronauts in the MCU in the 1960s. And they went on a mission and got sucked in to the quantum realm. And then, when they finally get out of the quantum realm, they're in today's time, in 60s clothing and shit, and they're all have powers. You know, but they've been in the quantum realm this whole time. That is the first leak, and the reasoning be behind what the Fantastic Four are going to be doing in the MCU. I think that was the original plan. I honestly do. I think that's what they were thinking before Kang started beating white women. Now they have to think of something different. This is the new rumors and new leaks. And I think this is what it was changed to. The new rumors and new leaks are saying that they are a superhero team of astronauts that went into space and got powers from radiation and shit. Just like in the comic books. True to the story. And they are in the 1960s. And they are a superhero family. But this is not the MCU. This is an alternate Earth reality. Where they are the only superheroes. There are no Avengers. There are no X-Men. There is no Spider-Man. They are the only ones with superpowers and the only ones that exist in their world. This is going to be a self-contained story. Self-contained story in the 1960s where Galactus will arrive with his herald. Still, right now, Javier Bardem May I more Javier above them. Javier above them. Will supposedly be Galactus, or at least they're trying to get him to be Galactus. 
Still no word on whether they're going to choose a Silver Surfer or Nova as the Herald. But it could go either way. It could be a female Herald or it could be Silver Surfer. Kevin Feige loves the Silver Surfer and he wants to make a movie, but they don't know if they're going to choose him because they got to go woke. So it might be a female and just be Nova instead of the Silver Surfer. And they'll save Silver Surfer for his own movie or some other ass that Kevin Feige wants to masturbate to. I don't know. Those are just shits going around right now. The whole point is, is at the end of this movie, in their own self-contained world, Whatever happens at the end will pull them into the multiverse or into secret wars or into whatever conflict is going on in the MCU. They will get pulled into the MCU basically the same way Deadpool and the X, some of the X-Men will get pulled into it as well. This conflict that they're, that now they're building. No more Kang. This is something else they're building. At the end of their movie, that's how they're going to get transferred into the MCU. And to credit scene, Dr. Doom. What they're saying, Dr. Doom will get pulled into as well. He will not be in any of the movie. He will only be in the end of credit scene, which is why they have not casted him. They might not even cast him until they actually need him. They might just put a guy in a fucking mask and fucking shit and send him into the end of credits and some CGI shit to somebody with a robe. They don't even show his mask or his face. You just know it's a green robe and shit. That's all they're going to do. It doesn't matter. They can take their time with that ass. This is all going to lead up to Secret Wars. And it looks like they're going to do the modern day Secret Wars slash some of the pieces from the old Secret Wars. It's going to be half and half. I don't think it's going to be exactly the same. It's going to be Secret Wars half and half from the 1984 and the 2000s smushed together. The, some of the pieces put together with the MCU. That's what it's going to be. And at the end, at the end of Secret Wars, my theory is they will remain as a Fantastic Four. We will have Miles Morales. We won't have Tom Holland anymore. We'll have Miles Morales, just the, <laughs> the way the comic books are. And we'll have a brand, some of the new Avengers, like the, all the kids and shit. Anthony Mackie, Black, Captain America. And new actors replacing Tony Stark, White Captain America, Black Widow, and Hulk, and all these other assholes that don't want to play $20 million a movie anymore. And that's the reboot. The next five, seven years we're going to get. Starting with this ass that is probably not going to come out to 2025. Yeah, there's your cake. Eat it, you bitches. Cares. Fuck you, Kim Feige. Dumbass. It sounds promising, but at the same time, I don't even know what to say. They're all good actors. I'm sure they're going to kill it. I'm sure this might actually be something that will actually make Disney and Marvel some money again. Because it's something new we haven't seen. What it, what it comes down to is the whole cosique cohesive story of it doesn't make any sense. The reason why the first 10, 12 years of Marvel movies worked, the, the Infinity Saga as they call it, is because every fucking movie was connected. Every movie was connected. Every end of credit scene led to something else. It didn't like, here's an end of credit scene and then we never explore it ever again. Three, four years have gone by and we don't know what happened to Shang Cha. Fuck you. This is all ass. That's, that's, that's been happening. Everything was connected back in the day. Every fucking movie. Everything. This new phase of movies, everything doesn't make no sense. Everything's just like woke, 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 ass, ass, ass. And nothing is cohesive or connected. And that's where you went wrong. That's what made you money and made you apart from all the other studios was the fact that you were putting all your movies in the same universe connected together. Some of the characters from one movie even came out in the next movie and you knew, oh shit, he lives in the same city and shit. We don't see that anymore. We don't. And that's the biggest problem with the MCU. This looks good. It looks good on drawing, on paper, on me saying these are the actors. It looks great. 
But is it really? I don't know. We will see. Moving on to more ass. We do have leaks coming to you from a show that has not only been canceled, they fired all the directors, the writers, everybody in the production, all the gays and lesbians. They got them the fuck out of there. And they started again. 19 episodes they shot. We're not going to get 19 episodes, they say. We might get less. But here they are, the reshoots. They're sh reshooting this whole fucking series again. Here is Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox, and the new Marvel Daredevil suit. Really red. Really red. Really bright. But I will say there are lights for, 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 you know, for fucking Hollywood and you need to get the right shit angles. All this will be fixed pre-production and I'm pretty sure he won't be as bright in the show. Because it wouldn't make sense for him to be a vigilante running around like a bright, bright red fucking, uh, fucking jalapeno or some shit. Some chili. It doesn't make any sense, so I think it's going to be darker. It's just the way the fucking shit is shot because there's a Hollywood and there's lights. All right, so everybody stop hating on it for being too red. It's all right. We also got some fucking scenes or, or some pictures. One of the bad guys in the new bad guys or old bad guys that they rehired, Bullseye, is coming out. And, uh... <sighs> All right, I have a lot to say, a lot to fucking say. Let me start with one thing. I'll tell you like this. Daredevil, I'm trying to give them credit for being red. But what the fuck is up with his eyes? He looks like the Flash, like he has goggles or lenses, like here are some pictures of Netflix Daredevil. Which literally, the way it was, is because like this picture is enhanced, so it's brighter. But it really was like dark red. And it was a film. And I'm pretty sure the actor in real life couldn't see through it. It was just for like, here's a scene where you talk. Just stand there. You can be blind. Doesn't matter. Just talk and sound serious. That's what it was. And then they did it in She-Hulk with the yellow version where they gave him blacked out eyes and it looks dope as fuck. Even though a lot of it was CGI, it looks dope as fuck. But why? Why? Does he have goggles in this new MCU version? I mean, look, I haven't seen the trailer. We haven't seen the trailer. It might be a year before we see the trailer. To be honest with you, they're barely sh they're reshooting this whole fucking show. We haven't seen the trailer. We haven't seen the finished product. But goggles. Look at how the Flash looked in finished product. And I'm pretty sure he didn't have goggles. They added that CGI. This is real goggles that he has on. It doesn't look good. It does not look good. I'm judging the shit out of it, even though I haven't seen the final product. I'm just stating that right now. The bullseye costume. I know a lot of you are going to say, Hey, Godson, they're using the, the exact iteration as a new bullseye from the comic books. It's, it's, it's to the T. He's got the combat. Combat boots, the, the, the combat pants, the fucking guns, and everything. He doesn't have the bullseye. You dicks. I'll tell you that right away. I mean, how hard is it to put on some fucking circles on his shoulder pads or on his fucking forehead like these nerds did to di Like these nerds took the daredevil and just black and put some bullseyes and shit on it. They didn't put no bullseye on this. I know what I can say. Oh, this is his first iteration. By the end of the show, he's going to have, he's going to look exactly like him. All right, all right, whatever, whatever, whatever. 
Why the fuck is he wearing a tracksuit? A purple? By the way, why isn't it all black? It's purple. Purple fucking tracksuit. No armor. This is a guy who is a sharpshooter, who carries guns, is going to go out to assassinate and kill people. Yes, he's a badass, and he's really good at killing people. But don't you think an assassin, which is what he is, should have some kind of body armor? What if someone gets lucky and actually shoots him? Is anything going to protect his chest or his belly or his neck or his cheek or his side of the face? No. How is this even realistic? His pants don't even look like they have armor in it at all. And he's fighting Daredevil who is all covered in armor and shit. Oh my god. This is bad. And the worst part about it is, I'm sorry I fucked up earlier, but here he is. They got the same actor to come back. That's badass. Because he was good. In the, the first Daredevil season or whatever the fuck, how long ago, 10 years ago it came out. He was good in it. Charlie Cox is going bald, by the way. He was good in it. But they couldn't have fucking get a trainer for him? What am I looking at? Did this? Did they go fucking to, to Chachi's? Did they have like fucking a parrilla for the fucking fajita steaks and burritos and shit before they filmed this? Why is he bloated? Oh man. Is this what we're gonna see on television? You guys. Not only that, but there's a black guy over there taking a picture of him in the background with his phone and shit. Oh, let me take a selfie. The fuck's going on here? Oh my god. Echo the show started off as nine episodes before Kevin Feige said, This is ass. Let me reshoot it and make it into five. And Echo sucked ass. And everything the big ass told us that was cut out of it, the nine episodes, that would have made the show better. It would have. It would have made it more cohesive, rounded, grounded, and better. What is Kevin Feige doing to this? If he's going to take 19 episodes, shorten them, and then he's reshooting ass like this out of shape piece of shit. They might as well have gotten me in there. Or he who should not be named. They're going to call him us. They're, they're right there. That's who it is. Motherfucker. Tall, six foot, fucking fat as fuck, lanky motherfucker. Right there. God damn it. Kevin Feige, you're fucking up. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, it gets worse, y'all. It does. It really does. I'm not going to lie to you. Here we go. I got some video for you all, and we got some fight scenes with Daredevil in a bar and Bullseye, actual leaked video for you all. And uh, all I'm going to say is that after going through that glass window with no armor and no protection, Bullseye is dead. All the glass killed him. Just hitting the floor. No helmet on. No nothing. The daredevil has a helmet on. And shit. He's protected. This guy gonna go through the window right to... He's dead. Yeah. He broke his neck. That's it. The fight's over. This is ass. This is fucking ass. And I'm pissed about it. There is one thing. Hey, look, I, I'm probably judging it too much. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna lie. This is... Pre, post production, post, 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 whatever the fuck you want to call it. Pre, pre, pre. Right? Just before they do any of that ass Hollywood shit. This is just like the raw bones of the shit we're seeing. Well, this might look good on screen. But I'm basing it on everything we've seen before in all the other shows. And it's been ass. All right? That's all I'm going to say. But let's keep going with this. Because there is some stuff that's promising, y'all. We got Daredevil swinging from the goddamn fucking 
Oh, uh, shit. Or wherever the fuck this is, he's swinging up there, and it looks like he's going to use, you know, he has like a nunchuck or something that he throws and shit, and it comes out like a rope, and he swings across and shit. And then you see here, he's going to swing across and then intercept Bullseye as Bullseye is going towards his target right here. And I got to say, I do like this because Kevin Feige has come out and say that are his favorite Marvel characters are Silver Surfer and Daredevil. And if he likes this that much and he's adding elements like this, that's cool. I'll give him that because we have not seen this in the in, in Daredevil up to this point. This is more in line with the comic book where he is doing shit more in line to Daredevil. Cheers, DJ New Kid. Thank you for being here tonight. We love you. But I will say one thing about this. I'm about to bring you major spoilers, y'all. Because this video shows you spoilers and you don't even know what you're looking at. Daredevil is stopping Bullseye after he's already killed somebody. And if you look right here on this video, the bottom, we see Karen Page. Scared as fuck. As he's about to shoot her, which is the pictures we saw previously. He's about to shoot her. And Daredevil stops him. But if you look, someone's already dead. Yes, my friends. Kevin Feige is going to pull the trigger. On a character. And it's going to be none other. Than Foggy Nelson. Foggy's gonna die, my friends, in this shot. And uh, Karen's gonna be covered in blood. Yeah. I knew one of them had to die. I thought she was gonna die because originally Bullseye in the comic books kills her. We talked about in the past. But it turns out it's gonna be Foggy. And uh, there, there has to be some, but there has to be some deaths, you know. Uh, I'm surprised that it was foggy. Uh, but I like Karen. I liked her character better from Daredevil. And if it's continuity, she better be the exact same Karen where she's kind of like, she's already gotten a taste of the dark side. She killed that guy. She killed Fix Fisk's right-hand man. And she even told Fist, like, you know, like, the reason I stopped pulling the triggers because I like there was no more bullets in the fucking clip. I would have kept going on that son of a bitch. So she got a taste of what it's like to kill a person. So she's got the dark side in her too. And she just seen Foggy get killed in front of her. And Matt, Daredevil, not being able to save or stop this. This is going to be hardcore. Uh, uh, this I am excited. Like I, I'm excited, semi-excited about this. But I guess, ugh, some of this stuff's worrying me, my friends, because we've seen Echo... And Echo could have been amazing, and it turned out to be shit. This looks semi-semi. This looks like it could be amazing, but some of these pictures I saw earlier are worrying me and shit. Um, the story sounded good. I mean, this is all still going to revolve around fucking Kingpin. Kingpin running for mayor and him saying that vigilantes are a menace to the city and need to be stopped and shit. And that's where all this uh, ass is going to lead to. Uh, who knows? Uh, it looks good. Sort of. You heard my complaints. We'll see how this turns out. But. We're going to keep going. To what everyone had been talking about. Since Super Bowl uh, Sunday. Deadpool trailer. Which is now. Called, I thought it was going to be called Deadpool and Friend. It is now called Deadpool and Wolverine. Everyone's seen the trailer. I cannot show the trailer. Our channel will get fucking cut off live. It's happened when we've shown a trailer before. So, I'm just going to go over spoilers and things that are in the trailer that confirm the spoilers. First things first. Eliath, that Fog monster is going to be in it. And that proves that the wasteland that Wolverine and Deadpool are stuck in 
is the place where the TVA purges you. They zap you and you fall into this fucking place that Loki fell into. Everything's a wasteland. Everything they zap goes there. The universes they destroyed go there. And then this creature goes and eats everything that's you know he finds everything in the universe every human every whatever and that's how they get rid of everybody this this is creature this is all continuity this is following the spoilers this is all gonna be in there it's true y'all uh really quick you get a summary of the spoilers what they're saying is that deadpool and it's in the trailer confirms it deadpool will be uh, approached by the TVA because Deadpool went back at the end of his movie. He was going back in time and changes to saving his girlfriend. He saved, as you see in the trailer, he saved all the X-Force from dying. He did stuff that's not supposed to happen and created an alternate timeline and that's supposed to be there so the TVA has to go and purge it. But they're going to go and purge Deadpool. And shit. At the end of the day, Deadpool, they can't kill him and it looks like a from what I'm seeing here in the trailer, it looks like Deadpool is going to be chased throughout the Marvel Universe movies. It looks like he's going to go to the Avengers movie and the TVA is chasing him throughout it. And he's you see in the trailer, he kills TV agents in that same spot where the Avengers are in that fucking movie. So they're chasing him while he's running away. And some of the spoilers are saying that because they can't kill him, even if they purge him, because they realize this guy just regenerates and shit. He's different than everybody. Not only that, but he remembers stuff. Like he realized, and he knows the fourth wall. Like he's like, he's different than anybody. He's almost like God because he knows he's not real and he knows he's in a movie. So he's really different than everybody. And so the TVA knows, we, what do we do with this guy? And so they just kind of fucking hold him captive. The the spoilers. The trailer makes it look a little different. The trailer makes it seem like he's chosen to be the hero. That's not what the spoilers are saying. The spoilers are saying he's a used car salesman now. He has all his friends now because he saved them. The TVA goes and busts his ass. They real they then he breaks out. They realize they can't kill him. So they keep him locked up. Something's going on in the TVA, supposedly, according to the spoilers. Kang or Secret Wars or something that they realize that they need to form a multiversal team. That's what Secret Wars is. They need to find a multiversal team to fight whatever, if it's Kang or if it's something else, whatever it is. They need to find a team to fight this new evil that is destroying every universe. Deadpool supposedly overhears this and says, if they're going to make a team, they're going to need a Wolverine. And there's only one Wolverine, and I'm going to have to find the perfect one. So supposedly, Deadpool escapes from the TVA and goes out jumping through universes looking for the perfect Wolverine to bring back to the TVA. At the same time, the TVA is chasing him to kill him because he's fucking up. All right. So we do see in this trailer a version of Wolverine that everyone's reminded from the comic books that is called Patch. Where he's uh, kind of like James Bond and shit and they're playing uh, Casino Royale or some ass. I'm going to pop up another beer here for you all. We're getting deep into this nerd shit. That Wolverine, my friends, is not Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman is not built like that. Hugh Jackman is buffer, wider, and his head's not shaped like that neither. I'll just put it like that. Everyone on the motherfucking internet is saying this is Harry Potter. Daniel Radcliffe while I believe that Harry Potter Daniel Radcliffe will be a Wolverine variant in the movie because Deadpool will be searching for different Wolverines to find the best one 
he will find a version that is Harry Potter, Wolverine, he will, Daniel Radcliffe, but this isn't it. You know who this is? And I don't know why no one's figured it out. This is Tadgert Egerton, the Kingsman. You idiots. That's Tadgert Egerton, the Kingsman. He's going to be a Wolverine variant that Deadpool is going to try to recruit. Right there, motherfuckers. And there's even a bigger spoiler that no one, no one is talking about. That is not the Hulk sitting in front of him, obviously. Look at the difference in the comic book. And in real life, the Hulk, even if it was Smart Hulk, which is still smaller than the Hulk, Smart Hulk is still bigger than the regular person. And Wolverine is short. That is not Smart Hulk. You know who that is? That is most likely Chad and Tatum's Gambit. And they're playing a card game. We're going to see, just you wait. This is my theory. I can't wait to see if this is true. But I think this is where Chat and Tatum's Gambit will be playing a card game with Taggart Edgerton's Wolverine. And Deadpool will show up trying to recruit him and realizing he's not the Wolverine that he wants. At the same time, the TVA shows up and, and when Deadpool runs away and jumps into another universe. That's the movie. The TVA is chasing Deadpool while he is looking for the perfect Wolverine to bring back to the TVA for their team. And the Wolverine that this asshole finds, my theory, it's going to be the one from X-Men 97. That's why he has the yellow and blue suit. It's going to be from the cartoon, but it's going to be live action. And what eventually happens is when he finds that Wolverine and he says, you're the perfect one. That Wolverine's going to be like, fuck you. Get away from me. What the fuck? Who are you? And then the TVA will show up and zap them both. That's how they end up in the wasteland. That's where they end up in the wasteland where they're stuck with this fucking, uh, with this thing that's chasing them and shit. And in that wasteland, they will find bad guys from other movies like Pyro, which was shown in the fucking trailer. Yes, cunt, you're absolutely right. Cassandra Nova was shown in the trailer, which will be played by Emma Corrin, the little girl that played Lady D in the fucking, uh, uh, fucking, uh, I don't even remember the crown. Oh, yeah. I don't even remember what season I last... I think I saw season four. I need to catch up on that shit. But she will be Cassandra Nova, which is uh, fucking the Professor Xavier's half-sister. It's a fucked up story in the comic books, which I don't think they're going to do. It's Professor Xavier's half-sister that was born in a womb and then, tried to, and then he strangled her with the umbilical cord. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense to be in this movie. But I think they're just going to say she's an alternate version of Charles Xavier that's a female. Plain and simple. That's all they're going to say. And she got zapped by the TVA and is in this new world. But because she is basically Charles Xavier, she is powerful. And she's able to survive in this fucking world while building a little crew of whoever's stuck there, like Pyro. And Sabretooth, which we've seen already in the fucking leaks that we've shown months ago. Sabretooth will be in this. Logan will cut off his head. Sabretooth from the first movie, X-Men movie. Logan will cut off his head. And we're even going to see De so many different versions of Deadpool. That Deadpool disgusting little dog. We're going to see Kid Deadpool. We might see Lady Deadpool. We're definitely going to see another Deadpool that's Ryan Reynolds that's not burnt and has like Omega Red kind of fucking hair that we showed fucking a few weeks ago and shit. Um, so yeah. All the, the, the spoilers, they seem to be true. This movie is fucking happening. Um, exactly the way the spoilers are saying it. Per the, the, the bad guy of the movie is going to be Professor X, the, the girl version of Professor X, which is his half-sister, Cassandra Nova, 
And she's going to be in this wasteland while Wolverine and Deadpool are going to try to figure out how to get out of this wasteland. And obviously at the end of this movie, Wolverine and Deadpool will get out of this wasteland um, and they will end up in Secret Wars. The, the TVA will say, okay, fine, you guys survived. Wolverine and Deadpool, you're in. You're in the team or whatever. We can't get rid of you, assholes. You're in the team. And they're going to be in the team with with uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland and uh, probably some other fucking assholes from other movies uh, and shit that they're going to recruit, I imagine. In this movie, it is said we are going to see the original X-Men, Halle Berry, uh, Fameke Jensen, uh, and James Marston. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think Beast that we already saw in the Kelsey Grammer, the new Beast that we saw in the Marvels, and that version of um, uh, Captain Marvel, What's her, what was her name? I don't even remember what her name was in that fucking movie. Uh, Maria Rambeau. I think they will be pulled into Secret Wars and they will be part of the team, for sure, of the new team. Because the new team that is supposed to save the MCU is going to be made up from heroes from other movies. With the exception of Tom Holland. Tom Holland will be the only one from the MCU. Uh, it'll be like Avengers Endgame where everyone in the MCU dies and it's going to have to be up to the, the whoever's left over from the from the other movies plus Tom Holland who's going to be the leader to save the you know to save the day and bring everyone back that's what it's going to be uh blade is coming down the line probably 2 years from now DJ New Kid uh, cause they re they fired everybody and started rewriting it. Mahershala Ali almost fucking quit on these assholes. They said, uh, Punisher would be awesome. He is going to come out supposedly a little bit in the daredevil show. Um, or originally, I don't know if Kevin Feige is going to keep it in there. Uh, we'll see what's going to happen, man. Uh, another spoiler. And big thing that came out in this trailer that I want to talk about. Last thing I'll talk about on, on, on Daredevil. Was this little Easter egg. Where they showed the comic book of Secret Wars. Right next to Deadpool. Which confirms that this movie w is going to lead into Secret Wars. And they're even showing the Doctor Doom cover bro. And Doctor Doom is going to be transferred from the Fantastic Four movie like I just told you earlier. He'll be transferred from the Fantastic Four movie into the MCU for Secret Wars. And I think he will replace Kang. Or they might keep Kang or the Beyonder. But in, in, in the end of the day, Doctor Doom is going to become the final bad guy for Secret Wars in the MCU. I think that's... That's the ultimate plan. That's the right thing to do. It should have been that. They should have introduced Doom. They should have introduced Doom in the Fantastic Four since WandaVision. That's where they fucked up. Since back then, you had the opportunity to do it. And you already had the rights. You idiots. The X-Men could have come later. Doesn't matter. But the Fantastic Four was, was essential to Secret Wars. And to, even to Kang. It's very essential because Kang is a descendant from fucking... Reed Richards, his name's Nathaniel Richards. This is great, 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 great grandson and shit. So it didn't even make sense for you not to fucking introduce him early. Um, Kang was a waste of. Kang could have saved the MCU, man, but that unfortunately that guy likes beating uh, white women that are uh, more defenseless than he is. Unfortunately. Um, what are you gonna do? I mean, that's why I say get an outlet. You know, like this is my outlet. I scream here. And get mad all the time. That's why I don't beat women. <laughs> or whatever. Get an outlet. And let your anger out somewhere else. Don't don't beat on people. It's bad. Especially women. It's really, really bad. Anyways. I'm done with the Deadpool secret shit. We'll see how this movie turns out. I think this is going to be the only movie that will make them money. And in fact, this is the only movie that we're going to see. Uh, is it this year? Yes. Only Mar We're going to see Sony movies, but we're not going to see any Marvel movies except for this. This is uh this is their only money they're going to make cuz I can tell you 
all the other Disney CGI, uh, whatever it's called. What's it called? Uh, fucking Pixar. All that ass they're going to be releasing. No one. No one is going to go see. Uh, Snow White. Nothing's going to make any money. Deadpool and Wolverine is the only thing that's going to make Disney money this year. And they're going to they're gonna fucking uh, regret it. But oh well. Uh, speaking of Madame Web, Indie Phantom, let's get into it. I saw this movie, y'all. Uh, in a nutshell, because I'm going to get into spoilers, and I'm going to show you the only good scenes in the movie. I'm going to spoil it for y'all. I don't show trailers, but I can show you this shit because I got ways to get around it. You'll see in a minute. Mm. Let me light this up. This, in a nutshell, my final verdict. This is a very good, shitty movie. That's the only way I can explain it. It's, uh, if you look at it from a nerd point of view, and you look about it knowing Spider-Man lore, Madam Web lore, these little girls and everything, this is ass. Uh, if you look at this as just a movie movie, and you realize that there's a lot of hot women in this, and the story is, like I said, if you don't look at this like a comic book nerd, it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. The dialogue is bad if you are a comic book nerd. Before I get into the scenes that I'm going to show you, I will explain why I mean by that because a lot of people are making memes about this. The dialogue is bad because they make references to Spider-Man movies. Like instead of saying with great power comes responsibility, says with responsibility eventually will come great power or some ass. Like they do it, do it the same, but they do it different. Like to try to leave a little ass like that. And it's just like, come on now. Uncle Ben is in this. I'll go into this a little further. But they say something to him like, oh yeah, like, like you've never been shot in Queens before. And I'm just like, oh my god, why would you write that in the movie? Like, we know he's going to get shot in the future when he's older. All right, this is where it can get bad, all right? Like, if you're a nerd and you know lore, this is a bad movie. If you're going into this to just see a movie, a popcorn flick, it's an entertaining movie. But let's get into it. I'll start with the origin of Madam Web and the explanation as to why anything is fucking happening. Apparently, Madam Web's mom was pregnant with a baby girl. And the doctor told her that her baby girl was going to be born with some kind of muscle dystrophy disease. Basically, she's going to be paralyzed. And she said, is there nothing we can do? And she says, well, our technology and science is not that advanced. I mean, there's people in South America that claim there's some spiders to researching and shit. And this lady's all like, what? Where? And so she decides to become some kind of scientist and goes to South America to find these magical spiders with healing powers or some ass. Yes. This has nothing to do with Spider-Man. This is all magical ass shit. So apparently somewhere in the South American rainforest, there is a tribe of fucking indigenous fucking uh white mexicans because they're not brown people they're white motherfuckers a bunch of white mexicans who have spider-man powers and they call themselves their little clan or, or tribe the arañas and for those of you who are not latin x latino chicano mexicano or of that sort oh uh, brown that means spiders they call themselves the spiders, the arañas. And these men possess agility and superhuman strength and shit. And, and they can poison people with their touch and shit. 
And this, the legends and the folklore say these people got it from getting bitten by spiders that live deep in the jungle. And these spiders have, you know, powers and, and healing abilities. And so this lady who wants her child to be born, not paralyzed, goes to go find these spiders. And one of her companions is Ezekiel Sims. And Ezekiel Sims is basically uh, some guy who... And then you know what? They don't really explain why. But he's some guy who wants these, who's heard the same legends of these spiders with powers. And he wants the spider for, to become rich, supposedly. And they don't explain why. They never, I'm, I just realized that they never explain why. Why? Like why? What is his motivation? He just wants them. This lady finally finds a spider and she's happy because she's going to cure diseases that have never been cancer and AIDS and all this ass shit. She's happy she found a spider. And this fucker tells her, give me the spider. And he kills all these people and he shoots her and he runs away with the spider. So these arañas, these tribes of ancient fucking Aztec white Mexicans, because they're not Mexicans, they're not brown, they're white motherfuckers, show up. And they try to save her. And the way they think to save her is to let her get bitten by one of the magical spiders. And so then she starts convulsing and gives birth right there. And she gives birth to her baby girl who is Madam Webb. And the spiders made it so she's not paralyzed, my friends, of the disease they said she has. But because she got shot, they couldn't save her. And she's about to die from the gun wound. And the guy, the araña... The chief Aranya tells her, don't worry, when your child grows up, she'll come back here and I'll tell her everything she needs to know. No explanation as to what this guy did with the newborn baby. Did he walk into town and handed it over to the hospital? Did he give it to some, I mean, because he's dressed all weird with like weird like trees that look like spider webs all around him. He's half naked. Did he walk into town with a newborn baby and handed it to somebody at an orphanage and said, this is an American baby. You need to take back to America. Her name is Webb and Cassandra Webb. Is that what happened, Sony? Avery Everett? I don't know. Tell me. Because the movie doesn't explain. But that's the origin. As to why the fuck anything happened. So this guy. Name. Fucking. Uh, and I'm just going to play this in the background. So you can see all the cool scenes and shit. But this guy named Ezekiel Sims. Apparently because of this spider that he captured or whatever. He becomes super rich. And, and powerful. He makes a million dollars or some ass. He's an entrepreneur. No, man, they don't explain what he did with the spider. Apparently, it, you you come to believe that maybe the spider bit him because he has superpowers suddenly. He's this guy who has superpowers. And some of his superpowers, just like Madam Webb, is he sees into the future. And he has this recurring dream. And in the recurring dream, these little girls who are spider women, they fucking kill him. I'm showing you all the good scenes so you don't have to see the movie. I'll explain what all these scenes are. Don't worry. You might be like, what's going on? I'll explain to you in a minute. I'm telling you the story. So these spider women, he sees that in the future, they are spider women. They have powers and that they kill him and that he dies in the future. When he's old, he has gray hair and shit. And he says, I don't know when it happens, but I'm old. And these little, these girls have powers and they kill me. And he wants to know, wow, like he wants to, he says, I'm not going to let this. I'm a millionaire. I've become rich because of the spider. I don't, they don't explain how or why or what he did. They just, all of a sudden he's rich. But he said, I'm not going to let these, this future apparitions destroy my legacy. So he, he goes and he fucks this lady that works for the government. And the lady that works for the government works for the NSA, National Security Agency. And, and this is back in the 90s when they barely had the technology for the internet. It barely got started and surveillance. And so he he sleeps with her and kills her and he gets the passcode or whatever. And he break they break him and his helper. He has a chick that is his helper 
Who knows what happens to her? Because they don't explain. She just disappears from the movie. But anyways, she's like the guy in the chair. And he tells her, here's the password to the government. Now you have access to all the cameras, social securities, to everything, databases. This is, and I don't know, they don't explain how. These are the images of the girls I see in my dream. They don't explain how because the technology doesn't, ex how the technology doesn't ex exist nowadays to take images from your dream and put them into a computer or a screen. Right now in 2024, it doesn't even exist. How the fuck does that technology exist in 1990? I don't know, explain to me. But somehow he has technology back then to put the images he sees in his dream onto a screen and he tells his helper, find these girls through with, 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 with the government agency with all the files. And she looks and she goes, well, yeah, but that means that they're teenagers. And she finds little girls, like they're teenagers, little like 13, 14 year olds. And he's like, and he's like, I don't care. One of these days they're going to be old and they're going to kill me. Like find all the cameras and find out where they're at and shit. These are the stuff that's pissing me off. I enjoyed the movie. I'm not going to lie. There are sexy women in this and there's a lot of sexiness in this. But Dakota Johnson is amazing and she's very lovable in this. And she plays a paramedic who was an orphan and never knew her mom, but was a paramedic. And her partner in, in the ambulance is Ben uh, uh, Ben Parker, Uncle Ben. And he just met a girl and her name is uh, May, May Parker. May Parker. May Parker has a sister-in-law who is Mary Parker, who just got married to May's brother, who is Richard Parker. All right, catch on. Those are Peter Parker's parents. Uncle Ben, those are the other parents. Peter Parker's dad is out of town while his mom is pregnant. They're throwing some kind of baby shower and he invites his friend from work, Madam Webb, to come to the baby shower of his fucking sister-in-law, which is Peter Parker's mom, who's pregnant with Peter Parker in her belly. And they're playing a stupid game in the fucking... They're playing a stupid game. Oh, I'm skipping around because I'm drunk and high. Madam Webb first gets her powers come out of her because there is some accident where... There's a car hanging from a ledge and they're paramedics. So they go there and they try to save a person, but the car falls off. She's in the car trying to save a person. They fall. They hit the fucking water. She hits her head on the glass and she drowns. Uncle Ben saves her with CPR. But when that happened, her powers were activated. because She kind of died and came back. And she got her powers there. Her powers is she sees the future before it happens. Maybe a minute or two, maybe five minutes, but she sees a little bit before it happens and she's able, if she's smart enough, to change it. At first, she isn't. This is what makes the movie cool. These are the cool parts of the movie. These are the good parts that I'm not even showing you here. She's, at first, is she, at first she thinks maybe this is something because I died and this is like a side effect or something. She didn't know why, but like, she sees somebody die and then it actually happens and she freaks out and then shit like that. A, a bird hits a glass and then like she's able to fix it. Shit like that. And she realizes this is not a side of like this is something that I have. Like this is real. Shit. Um, it, some funny scene where they're trying to name the baby Peter Parker, but everybody's saying Richard Parker. They're saying different names. They And by the way, they never say Peter Parker. Never. They tease it, but they never say it. They tease it. But yeah, all this stuff happens. But basically, she's awkward because she didn't grow up with a mom or a dad. She was in an orphanage her whole life because some fucking spider guy from the Amazons took her into town. Didn't make any sense and brought her back to America to grow up over here by herself in an orphanage. She doesn't like kids and doesn't want to be a mom or any of that shit. All right. Doesn't want to. Um, knowing man was really good. Fucking knowing was really good, Gomer. I love that fucking movie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but the story moves on. She's in the train and she runs into these little girls and she sees the future that this fucking guy, because with the help of his friend, his little assistant, 
they use the cameras and all this and they see the three coincidentally all three little girls are in the same train and he goes i'm gonna go kill them they don't explain why or how the fuck he even has a spider-man like suit which makes no sense I understand that maybe off screen he let the spider bite him. I don't know. They don't explain nothing. They don't explain nothing. This is all for you to make up in your head, I guess. Fuck you, Avery Avery. Fuck you, Sony. And fuck you, Amy Pascal, for not fucking making a cohesive story that makes sense. Explanations and shit. Min stuff is missing out of this. Or that they didn't even bother to write it in. That's what pisses me off. When you're a comic book fan, you get pissed off. When you're a guy, when you're somebody who doesn't know shit about this, you can be okay with what you're watching on screen. She saves these little girls and they run away and they run away with her. And the way what happens is one of the little girls at first, because she says, get out of the train, follow me, come with me now. And, and one of the little girls is all like, hey, what are you doing? Oh my God, she's trying to abduct us. And because of, and it's Sydney Sweeney who does that. And because of her, the cops here and they make a police report. And now the, the police report is that this fucking brunette kidnapped these three little girls. And that's why they she's stuck with them and they're stuck with her. Because they're all like, you idiots. Like, this guy's trying to kill you and shit. And I'm trying to save you and shit. Uh, but it's funny because, like I said, Dakota Johnson is phenomenal. These little girls are awesome in this. They, all the actors are good in, in, in what they're telling them to do. They're good in this. They're good in this. Um... And so Sydney, they, they have this relationship where, like, like I said, she didn't grow up with a mom or dad or none of this shit. And so she doesn't want children, doesn't want no part of families or nothing like that. But now she's stuck with these three teenagers. And then she finds out that all of them have basically been abandoned by their parents. And they're on their own. And so she's like, fuck. You know, she she wants to leave them. But she can't because she starts feeling sorry because she's like, well, they're... They're kind of like me. But they're annoying because they're kids. And uh, in real life, Dakota Johnson in interviews has said, you know, they were annoying because we're a different generation. And they purposely were annoying to me because they knew that I was older than them. And they did stuff that annoyed me. He goes, I love them and I am like a big sister. But there was that generational gap. And in the movie, they show that a lot. And I, and I like that a lot in the movie. That's the fun parts in the movie, the way the girls are. And the girls all have, all three of them have different personalities. Sydney Sweeney, even though she's actually in real, she's in real life, she seems like the sluttiest one. In this one, she's the innocent one. And the other ones are trying to make her fucking more fucking to not be innocent and shit. So there's this funny dynamic to it and, and ass. Uh, uh, I kind of like that. Uncle Ben, like I said, is played by Adam Scott. Adam Scott, which is awesome in any, any, this guy is awesome in anything he does. He is Uncle Ben. Um, at the end of the movie, Sid, this is weird. Sid, uh, uh, Madam Webb, uh, Dakota Johnson, she ends up going back to the rainforest to talk to the fucking, the fucking guy uh, from the from the origin, the fucking the weird fucking guy. She goes back to talk to him and shit. Uh, but it's weird because. Um, she leaves the girls with Uncle Ben and shit and leaves to South America in the middle of the fucking movie. And even I was like, what? They're being chased by some guy that has technology that right now, that now is accessible to everyone. But back then was it? He has technology that wasn't accessible to everybody. He can track people, GPS and all that ass, cell phones, access any camera around. And you're leaving them in the city with your fucking friend and his pregnant fucking sister. Uh, I know it's all part of the story and plot points and shit. And she leaves to South America to go talk to the spider person who saved her mom. So he can teach her about what her powers are and shit and where she comes from. Um, apparently her power is not only because she see the future. But as it's seen in some of these scenes that I'm showing here. Uh, in a little bit, you'll see it. I'm sorry. Fast forward. Let me fast forward through this ass. But some of her fucking powers, apparently, is that she can fucking split herself into like three or four different places at once and help. Like all the girls at the end are all about to die. 
and she's fighting the bad guy and she finally realizes her powers and she splits like Astro projects like three versions of herself to save the girls and still fight the bad guy. And I'm all like, I don't think that's in the comic books at all. At all. I don't think that's in the fucking, the powers of Madam Web at all. Avery Averett is pulling shit out of his old 80 year old asshole with this ass. It just pissed me off because I was like, what is this? The bad guy falls and dies, supposedly. I don't know. They might make a sequel because it is. Remember in the future, they, they fight him again. The girls, when they have all their powers, all the scenes when the girls have their powers is all, they're not flashbacks. It's like visions from the future that the bad guy has. And it's like less than five minutes. All the cool stuff with their suits is less. It's less than five minutes. And it's in, not flashbacks, it's in future vision. The dreams that this guy keeps having at night of these girls that kill him. So this is happening in the future. So because this is happening in the future, this makes me feel like there's more movies to come. Because he's not dead. He's going to live. And in the future when the girls. They don't get their powers in this movie. They don't. In the future when the girls finally get their powers. They will finally fight him. And we will see this. If they ever make a sequel. Which they won't. Because this movie only has made 20 million dollars. I think. And that's like nothing. To what these movies cost. All right, that's not catering for these fucking movies. Anyways, um, the sign falls on the bad guy and supposedly he dies. But at the same time, uh, she gets hit with this sign and falls along with him. And she falls into the water. And when she falls into the water, the fucking one of the pieces of the sign hits her fucking face or eye and blinds her. And then she drowns and dies again. So there's a thing in this movie where in the middle of the movie when she's first now learning to be a mother figure to the girls, she teaches them the only thing she knows because she doesn't know how to fight or anything. She teaches them how to fucking uh, something to help them. Because when if the guy, his powers is that also if he touches you, he poisons you. And the longer he holds on to you, the more poison gets onto you and you die. He did that to her, but he didn't hold on long enough where she survived. And she realized because she's a paramedic what the poison was and what it was doing to her heart. And so she told the girls, if he holds you long enough, he's going to stop your heartbeat. And you're going to go into cardiac arrest. And she told them the only way to save you is to do CPR. And so there's a whole scene where she's teaching the little girls how to do CPR. All of them. And she kind of bonds with them and kind of becomes like their older sister. Like she's teaching them. She didn't like them at first. I and mean, she starts liking them. And when she's trying to, now I'm protecting them. I'm saving them. They're my little sisters. They pull her out of the water. And they bring her back to life with the CPR she taught them. But like I said, the sign blinds her. And so at the end of the fucking movie, we finally see Madam Webb. The way she is in the comic books where she's blind and paralyzed because the sign also fell on her and she fell into the water. She's blind and paralyzed. And now she's adopted the three little girls. They don't have powers yet. They haven't been bitten by no spiders. They don't have powers. But now she's adopted them. And she tells them like, I see the future and you guys are going to grow up to be great. And, and, and defend people. And there's more visions here that I'm showing you. Of them fighting and shit. And if you notice. Man this is the fucking. Right here I'm going to pause it right here. That's the guy who kills Uncle Ben. From Spider-Man 2. They use some footage from. From uh, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 2. And I'm just wondering. What the fuck was Avery Averett and Sony thinking. When they make this movie. To do that. That's the guy. I I I, I might be wrong. Because I'm, I, I, like I said, I didn't pay for ass. I downloaded this, and this is what I downloaded. This might be. This looks like the guy from the Tobey Maguire movie who kills Uncle Ben and shit. Um, 
But she sees visions of them being great superheroes in the future. And she tells them, you guys are going to be great. Not only that, but I'm going to be there. I'm going to be your mentor and I'm going to be there by your side. And she sees the vision at the end. Here's the Punjamis doing their fucking come to our casino fucking advertisement. But you see her at the end with the girls and she's finally fully Madam Web floating with her sunglasses and ass and all of them are there and shit. And so this sort of sets up fucking part two. Which will never happen because this movie has made no money. And that's the truth. Which is why I tell you. This is a good shitty movie. This is a very very good potential. Um, uh, What do they call them? Cult classics. Um, the critics are tearing it apart. The audience is tearing it apart. The critics tear everything apart that's sci-fi or superheroes. They do. So it doesn't matter what the critics think. But the audience is tearing it apart mostly because of the lies they fed you in the trailers. Because everybody thinks they're going to go into this seeing spider women in costumes fighting the whole movie. And you're not. There is less than five. I am showing you the spider women. In the whole movie. Right now. I am showing you. The spider women in the movie. That's it. You're not going to see anything else. Except for what I'm showing you. I, I, on what you've seen in the trailer. The trailer shows you the movie. Basically. The trailer shows you the whole movie. There is nothing. The only thing that was not in the trailer. Is the goddamn origin. Um, That's it. The origin scenes is the only thing that is not in the trailer. 100%. Everything else is in the trailer shows the whole movie. There is nothing that you haven't seen already. And that's why the audience is pissed off. Because you fed them lies. You fed them something that they thought they were going to get. Women and being Spider-Man fighting crime. And that's not in the movie. That might be in the sequel. But the way it looks with the money. We're probably not getting a sequel. So. That's my verdict. It is a good. Shitty movie. If you're a comic book fan. This is bad. And you're going to hate it. Plain and simple. If you just go see it to see a popcorn flick. You'll be entertained. You really will. It's not that bad. It's just not Spider-Man or Madam Web or anything to do with the goddamn comics. Except for some of the looks of it. So, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. Avery Averitt, I don't know why the fuck you're still employed at Sony. I know why Amy Pascal is there because she has money and she fronts money for these fucking pieces of ass. But between this, Morbius, and the coming Craven the Hunter, I don't see how the fuck they can continue to make these movies. I really don't. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But with that being said, I think I have done enough ranting for today. And I and I, a mistake here. I have the bullseye up here. I've done enough ranting for tonight, and uh, and I really don't have anything else for y'all today. Uh, but I do want to thank you, each and every one of you, for being here for the first official underground broadcast, y'all. It's a broadcast, and uh, and being here and supporting the channel. Uh, I'll try to do my best every week. And uh, if you need, uh, you want something different, if you want improvements, if you suggestions. Uh, let me know in the comments and shit. Like I, I'll, I'll take everything by heart and I'll try to do everything I can and entertain the shit out of you and shit. Uh, but it is what it is. I will do something that was never properly done in the last channel, and I will give you some actual good life advice. My life advice to you is this. People in general, whether it's friends, family, 
loved ones. We're all human. Yes, fuck. People the underground. will let you down. Yes, fuck. You will Drink let yourself down. Yes, a few fuck. times in your life. Drink it will happen. People will let you down. But one thing, one person you should have let down, or you should try to live up to, is at least your aspirations, or at least commit to something. Do something. Don't quit. No matter how hard things get, no matter who quits on you, keep going. Because I've left dreams behind. And the worst thing you could do is wonder what could have happened. And the worst thing you can do is to wonder what could have happened. Move on. Keep moving forward. Keep moving. Keep creating. Keep being you. Keep doing you. Is basically today's, uh, this week's life advice. Thank you all for being here. And I'll see you next week. Cheers. Oh, 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 oh